Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Tim, we're in hell's courtroom. What's happening? <laughs> it must be March. It must be the March Badness Tournament of Villains. The worst people in Westeros, if you will. That's why I've got my crimes hood on. Because we're talking about crimes. Many, many foul crimes, Tim. It's a hard list to get on. Um, on, on your... If you, the viewer, to your left, you will see part of the bracket of our villain's tourney. As I scroll up, you can see some of the, some of the names here. And uh, so in the middle, you see the dishonorable mention list. These are the people whose crimes were not foul enough to make the top 32, at least as me and Maynard Plum saw it. So here's what we're going to do today, folks. We've got a couple interesting things, and you in the chat are going to participate. You're over here, but you're going to participate. So here's what we're going to do. For the first half hour, until Nettles gets here, because Girl Nettles is coming, for the first half hour, we're going to discuss these dishonorable mention people and their foul, despicable crimes. Because they're all interesting people to talk about. Uh, as Maynard James Plum, my manager, and I were, were discussing this roster of rapscallions and criminals and scoundrels, uh, there are some really interesting discussions to be had, even for the people who did not make the cut. And then on the, on the side here, this way, you'll see the, the 32 worst. Now, here's the thing, folks. Um, once we get into the tourney proper in half an hour, when, again, Girl Nettles appears and we've gotten through the dishonorable mentions, you in the chat will be voting. We're going to do rapid polls in the chat, and you guys will pick the winner for each bracket. Me and Tim and Nettles will simply be talking about how foul the crimes are. And then you guys will get to pick the winners, and we will go through the bracket, and we will get down to the worst, most hateable, most killable person. If you, if you could time travel into Westeros and you have one bullet, <laughs> who gets it? Uh, that's what we're going to try to figure out. Who is the worst person? So these are all fictional characters and fictional crimes, of course, in case any of the algorithms at YouTube are listening. We're talking about very fictional things, not real at all. And uh, we will try to, Tim, we will not, you know, we will say things like the R word instead of the actual R word. <laughs> um, I have written it on the screen with a little asterisk. We all know what we're talking about. We certainly will not be minimizing the crimes, but it, in order to avoid saying the R word um, 137 times, we will use euphemisms and things, uh, but just know that we will not be minimizing where's hot pie. I know, I know. And the final thing, guys, is that while we're talking dishonorable mentions at the beginning, I will give you guys the opportunity to, to, to overrule a, a, the committee. And if you see, and if, we, if with the chat uh, zeroes in on a name or two in this dishonorable mention list that might be worse than someone in the bracket, we will put it to a little quick poll and see if we can do any swaps. So, uh, yeah, uh, I will make this smaller so we can see all the names at first, and then in the future, I'll zoom in as we go to make it easier. Uh, but so yeah, we've got Magor the Cruel, John Connington, Euron, Vaermir, Raph the Sweetling, Vargo Hote, Biter the Tickler. <laughs> Biter and the Tickler. It sounds like a very bad episode of Sesame Street. Um, <laughs> Krasnismo Naklaws, Victarian, a late addition. I swapped him in for someone. Uh, we've got, let's see, Chet, Septon Ut, Gregor, Mago, Theon, Mad King Ares, Theon, who did more bad things than you think, um, <laughs> uh, Mad King Ares, Tywin, Tyrion, Walter Frey, Roos Bolton, Littlefinger, Cersei Lannister, Melisandre, Kyburn, Creepy Grandpa, Craster, Pyat Pri, Jano Slint, Amory Lorch, Barfbag, Amory Lorch, uh, Rorge, Joffrey, Cal Drogo, and Ramsey Bolton. These are some despicable people. Love your streams. Finally caught one early. By the way, Mountain Realm, Grey Shadow Ruins by Crypto Crypt is great background music for the streams. Oh, Cryo Crypt. Always appreciate the music recommendations. I'm from the days of social media where you used to share the songs that you liked. Um, it's not as... Back in my day, it's not as, not as common as uh, these days anymore. So let's get into this, Tim. Uh, go ahead and, and pick, pick a, pick a name off this dishonorable mention list and we will start talking crimes. I guess we can start right at the top with Randall Tarley. Let's do. 
Go ahead. So, all right. So Randall Tarley, like, <laughs> there's there's the crimes that we know, and then there's the crimes that we can speculate upon to come in the future. But what we know is terrible father uh, and misogynist. Uh, the way he treats Samwell, the way he bullies his own son, the way that he basically is going to arrange for a hunting accident to happen for him if he doesn't take the black so that he can move him out of the way and have his younger son become his lord and heir and the fact that he immediately brushes off the idea of well if, you know if you want to get rid of your kid and you want your second son to be your heir there's other ways of doing it like why not send him to the citadel and it's like oh but that's not good enough either as if it, he'd rather him serve at the wall and take the black than become than be a gray rat, so to speak. To do something unmanly with the name Tarly. So it's it's mm -hmm. literally spelling out I mean, you could say toxic masculinity if you want to, but it's certainly like leaning into the whole this is what a man is supposed to be, and no son of mine, blah blah blah. Like you could just hear it, you know, the drunk redneck mm -hmm. with the baseball bat, you know, like yelling at his gay son or you know whatever it's it's very yeah it's i mean sam's not gay obviously but he's not manly enough so it's just same kind of dynamic and uh yeah so randall tarley um total a-hole abuse of sam uh he does hang rapers so you give him that credit when he's um uh, when he's in charge of uh one of those towns in the riverlands when brienne sees him in book four which one is it I think it was salt pans. Salt pans, yeah. So kind of like Stannis, like points for that, I guess. Some measure of law and protection. Um, but yeah, the way he treats Brienne is pretty despicable, and the way he treats Sam is horrific. Uh, so yeah, honorable mention. Uh, Balin Greyjoy, pretty, pretty lousy guy. Um, he is, you know... Some people were like, what about Olena Tyrell, you know? And it's like, well, what was her crime? Killing Joffrey to protect Marjorie? Like, you know, that's, I'm not, it's, it's I mean, Joffrey's <laughs> a child, yeah, but he's also, you know, a monster in the making. A current, it's not even in the making, you know, we'll get to Joffrey, he's in the bracket. But, uh, yeah, so like, Olena Tyrell didn't, she could be on the honorable mention, I guess, is she? I don't know if I put her on there, but I just, I feel like she's pretty much, if Olena's on there, then it's like every High Lord is on there. She's not really doing anything worse. Um, the, I guess you could say killing Joffrey is, is villainous. If you take away the fact that we don't like Joffrey, you know, it's regicide or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I put her on honorable mention. But Balin Greyjoy is, is a cut worse, okay? So Balin Greyjoy starts a rebellion. He starts a war, which probably hurts people in the Iron Islands more than anywhere else. So you could call that misrule as well. But like anytime you as a leader make decisions that lead to war that didn't need to happen, that's a certain kind of villainy. And as we're going to see today, there are different kinds of villainy. And we'll have to consider the intent and the cultural context that sometimes, like with Drogo or uh, Victarion, these are both people that commit a lot of violence, but in the context of their culture, it's not quite the same as a sadistic person like Ramsay. But crimes, nevertheless. So Balin is not sadistic. He doesn't really torture people. He is a lousy father, just like Randall. Um, the way he treats Theon is heartbreaking, to be honest. Um, it's when we start sympathizing with Theon. That it's a really well-written scene because Theon is such an a-hole. And, and even on the way to Pike, like he's... Theon is treating, mistreating the, the captain's daughter pretty pretty badly, and he's just clearly a conceited prick and all that. And then we see him go in and get just... It makes you wonder about George's father, to be honest, or father figures in George's life. Like, one of them was a bad seat. <laughs> There's some bad fathers and I said fire, but main thing Balin does is start a rebellion that didn't need to happen. And he also is starting rebellion to reinstitute the old way, which is a culture that makes it okay, creates a context to legitimize rape, plunder, murder, uh, killing, pillaging, etc., etc. I'm not supposed to say the R word. I said it. Oh, well, it's going to happen. And you get the idea. So, yeah, your thoughts on Elena, Balin, and yeah. uh, those types well, of people. I mean, Elena is doing what she has to do for a woman to succeed in this world because she can't be the face. She has to be 
the the shadow, the the one behind the man, and use more of her nitwit son as her face to really pull the strings that she wants to do. Balin Greyjoy, he's an opportunist. Uh, the Greyjoy Rebellion is coming after Robert's Rebellion. Uh, we got a now untested king and a brand new dynasty. These kinds of transitions are always shaky, so that's why he does what he does at the time he does. Same thing, too, with uh, now he's an opportunist again because the next time he tries it is taking advantage of the War of the Five Kings to try and assert the Iron Islands as an independent kingdom again when he crowns himself again before he takes his tumble down the Bridge of Pike. Right, so he's just starting a war for a really bad reason to institute the most backwards form of Ironborn culture. So it's uh, it's literally make Ironborn great again. <laughs> Can I use Cockney rhyming scheme for the words you can't say? <laughs> Jape. Uh, no, I, I probably can't, Sean. I wish I had you here, Sean. I need to get you on a stream. A very funny and talented Sean MacArthur, friend of mine. IRL friend. We've gone to nightclubs and imbibed and together like friends do in real life. It's, I know, Tim. Hung out in, in real life with peoples. But yeah, we'll get, we'll get Sean on the, uh, on the stream and then y'all will learn what a funny fellow he is. But moving on. Who would see some other... Well, who are the other High Lord type villains on here? Okay, so Lysa Tully, she's complex. She's obviously a big victim of a lot of horrific things. Hoster Tully uh, should be on here. I don't know if I wrote him in, but just w from what he did... Yeah, he is... Uh, no, I didn't. He meant he should be on here. Uh, Hoster Tully basically forced Lysa to take an abortifacient, uh, which possibly damaged her ability to have children judging by the fact that she has so many miscarriages after that um and so this is another thing where we're protecting the honor of the house and ruining the lives of our children uh to do that so and then of course hoster you know doing the typical high lord thing of betrothing his young children out for purely political reasons no matter if the fact that lysa was like 17 and john Aaron was 60 or 58 or something it's a I mean, we talk about Rhaegar and Lyanna, and it's like, you know, uh, 15 and 22 when they met. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, was, I mean, like, who wants to marry a... It's, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. So, Hoster, Hoster Tully's on here. Lysa, of course, in the manipulation of Peter Baelish, um, lied to her sister and led to the downfall of House Stark and helped start the War of the Five Kings and murdered her husband. So she doesn't get a free pass. She's an adult. She did those things. Um, but she is a very complicated case, obviously, because of her, all the trauma. Your, your thoughts on Lysa and Hoster? Yeah, Lysa is a victim of circumstance, uh, being pushed down the road she was by her father uh, and by Littlefinger. And due to her... And then pushed out the moon door just to keep the metaphor. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. That's it. We'll get to Littlefinger, by the way. We'll get. He's a high, He's a, he's a contender to win this whole thing. When you see the crime, so we'll get to Littlefinger. Go ahead. But yeah, her infatuation with Littlefinger is what's allowing her to turn a blind eye to the things he's doing and allowing herself to become complicit in his crimes, the lies to her sister, uh, slipping John Aaron the tears of lease. All of those, all of those things, um, and the fact, but it's, but she's doing it because she can't see that Littlefinger doesn't actually love her; that he's just using her as a means to an end. Uh, and it's very heartbreaking the fact that even the night that they had together, um, when she snuck into his room after he had been wounded by uh, Brandon Stark, that he still called her cat. So it's like she's put up a wall to not see, like you know, you're. I'm not like, I'm not even his second choice. Like this is really, he really wanted her sister all along, but she's deluded herself. Yeah. And, and I just want to, it's one of those things where like, so part of the complexity here is that when someone is victimized at an early age, it doesn't remove their villainy from later actions that they commit, but it certainly complicates it. Like you said about setting them on the road to something. Mm -hmm. um, so Lysa potentially seems like she has 
some kind of mental health instability at the point that we meet her. She's also using drugs, I should point out. Um, the sweet sleep, she's taking some sort of opiate. Um, she's, it, you know, she's been traumatized. She's been manipulated by Peter. So there's a lot of mitigating um, you know, factors, but obviously she did still do those things. Uh, so that, yeah, like I said, that's the complexity of the character. So Maynard James Plum, who is going to be running our polls today, Let's do a test poll and chat just so that you can see how this is going to work. We'll do a test poll. Who is worse, Balin Greyjoy or Hoster Tully? And we'll give Maynard James Plum just a second to create that poll, and we'll see it pop up in the chat. Main, we're going to do Balin Greyjoy or Hoster Tully. Who's worse? And then, uh, and uh, yes, no, but don't don't vote with. I mean, you could type what you want, but you'll see, you'll get a, when it pops up, you'll be able to actually click on the poll and, uh, and vote. So we are, we are testing out the technology here. It's possible that Maynard Plum was, uh, praising Garth across the room when I shouted out his name just now and needs just a quick second to, uh, to get this going. I told him we would do a test poll somewhere in the first half hour. So uh, we'll just wait a second for that to pop up. Oh, and thank you, Martin Crow, for the generous, uh, generous super chat. Mm, mm, mm. Maynard James Plum. I think that I would say that it's funny, you know, and this is going to be some of the decision making. It's like Hoster's crime is more personal because we can see the victim. We know the damage that Lysa has been done. But Balin's crime affected more people because he, he started a war. So it's kind of how you want to judge it as far as like most hateable, who's the worst. But I leave it to you. Um, kind of like the deciding factor, again, is like if you can time travel, you know, to kill Hitler or whatever. Like, OK, so here we go. There is the poll. Balin and Hoster Tully. And you guys should be able to click on that and vote. And I should be able to expand it here so that we can watch them come in. The vote's pouring in. Okay, this seems like it is working. Seems like it is working. Cool technology, huh? Oh, I think I need to do all chat. Also, yeah, that will make the messages come in order instead of being filtered by YouTube's decision-making process. Balin Greyjoy is is running away. Okay, so we probably need to do some time limit stuff uh, so that we can know how long we're going to run the poll. Probably like, um, I'd say, Maynard, what do you think about three minutes? Is that too long? Three minutes basically for everyone to debate and for us to talk about uh, the characters. Because like we just talked about the characters and then did the poll when we do it in the contest. So I think, I think we'll do three minutes and see how that goes. Um, I can do that on my phone pretty easily, so. Uh, but we will, looks like everyone pretty much has voted. So let's go ahead and end the poll. Boom. And uh, then if that were a bracket one, then Maynard Plum would be right now updating the bracket. And then in just a second, I'd be able to refresh it and see the name, boop, advance just like that. So I think that's going to work. Let's get through some of these other dishonorable mentions here real quick. And uh, let's see, what other people? Well, we've got Marillion. Marillion, uh, serial um, uh, sexual abuse, assault, um, potentially the R word. Uh, it's not just the attempt on Sansa. He also basically is doing that to all the women in the castle. Once Lysa starts favoring him, he abuses that power and is a serial predator. So then he gets blamed uh, for a murder he didn't commit. But, you know, that's what's happening when you, when you take advantage of bad people to do bad things and they turn on you. There's no honor amongst bad people, really. So really mm -hmm. in... Suffered a pretty cruel fate. His fingers were broken. And I think his eyes were put out. Um, so that's pleasant. He did He did get his comeuppance. So Ilian Payne, good question. We talked about him. 
he's not really, he's just doing his job though. He's just an executioner. There's not, it doesn't rise to the level of, of even like Viserys on here. Viserys, just for his abuse of his sister and some of the things that he said, you know, I'd let Drogo's whole Kalisar F you, if that's what it took, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say that Ilian Payne's doing anything other than his job. Um, and his tongue was cut out basically for speaking the truth that Tywin was yeah. doing more than Ares. And that's, you know, yeah. gotta respect that. Yeah, Ellen. Ellen's one crime was telling the truth that Tywin, that Tywin really ran the kingdom. I mean, aside from that, it's like Ellen. Uh, yeah, yeah, you said he's do, he's doing his job. His job is in he's the headsman. He's an executioner. Like he cuts people's heads off. Yeah, he within a legal it. framework, it's not like well, yeah. it's his job. The, the king told him to do something hor horrific, but it was his job. Like no, they have capital punishment. They have a process, and then once that process is done, somebody with authority points to Ilian Payne, says cut his head off, and then he's the one who does it. So that's why. I say he's just doing his job, quote unquote. Um, I'm against capital punishment for what it's worth, but in this society, you can't, I don't think you can call that villainy. But this is why it's yeah. fun to talk about, so. Um, yeah, because while Ilan Payne took Ned's head off, yes, there was no malice in it, whereas, which is what separates him from someone like Jano Slint, when Jano Slint puts the spear through Ned's leg, and there is, there's total malice in that. There's joy in that. There's okay, so I stand. I think I stand corrected. Scarlet Widow says, I think Ilian should have been an adult in the situation and not taken the Child King's word. That's true. Varys is like, no, no, no. And everyone else is like, WTF. And basically, Ilian Payne rushes to comply with Joffrey's order. So that that is a little questionable. I agree with that. I agree that that is, that is going beyond just doing your job. The thing is that Joffrey's authority is unclear. Usually a child king, someone who is not of 16, not of age or whatever, is, has a regency. Um, and it is sort of unclear. Like, they sit Joffrey on the throne in order to grab it from, you know, Ned in the throne room. But they don't really say that there's a regent council. Like, it's kind of vague. So, yeah, we well, can talk about that. Let's keep going. What do you think about Varys and Pycelle? So Pycelle, first of all, it's just like one line in the books, but he assaulted, molested Sansa. Um, after the Battle of the Blackwater, when she had her first moon blood and panicked and tried to burn her sheets and stuff, um, they sent her to Pycelle and they undressed her and it says like he touched her all over and the bed maid held her down and then like it just goes right on in the narrative. Um, but it's really gross. And Pycelle, if he did that to Sansa, then that means he's probably doing that to all kinds of other kids. So I think we can assume that he is some sort of serial pervert molester type. Um, and then there is uh, the way he was sort of serving Tywin and betraying certain people that he was working for, like Ares or Robert at various times. So that's very dishonorable, right? Yeah. I mean, for Pycelle's part, Pycelle's crime is being complicit in holding up an unfair regime, which is which is how he works towards, uh, towards the Lannisters. So he is a pro he's like a cog in the system that, al that allows the Lannister machine to keep running. And so that's where his that's where its complicit nature falls into things. Yeah, I think corruption is a form of villainy. We're going to see that with Janos Slint. But yeah, Pycelle is working for Tywin and not necessarily doing what he's supposed to be doing at his job. That creates instability and corruption in the realm. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then with Varys, Varys, a lot of it depends on whether or not you think he is having children's tongues removed so that he has his little birds, or whether or not they're finding these children in Essos, because horrific things happen to slave children in Essos, and then Varys is essentially saving them and taking them in. Because remember, Varys used to be an orphan and a slave, and his privates were chopped off, and like, he... So again, he could be the kind of character that like, he's collecting those lost street rats, and they're now his informants, 
and it's serving his Machiavellian idea of, oh, I'm doing the for the good of the realm, but it involves endless destabilization and murder and turnover in order to get to the, you know, good King Fagon or whatever. Um, or is he having those children's tongues torn out just so they can be his little birds? I, I think it's the former. If it's the latter, then he would sort of shoot up the list a little. What, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, because it's still left unclear how if he's really ripping the tongues out of all these kids. But because I mean, but Varys's big part in the story is showing that uh, someone wants to put their ideal, I, their idea of what a good king is on the throne, rather than working with what they have to make a good king, which is what Varys's problem is. Because if Varys was truly, truly meant what he said, if he wasn't BSing. And that he was really doing this for the good of the realm. He would have worked with Rhaegar. But instead he brought Eris to the tourney at Harrenhal and unearthed and showed, and showed the plan. No, if, you're, if, if the good of the realm is, is what you're really working for, then you would, have ta- you would have seen the good in Rhaegar and been like, okay, I can work with this. Same too, you have a second chance with Tommen. Joffrey's a piece you know, Joffrey's a piece of work, but Tommen is a good kid. He can be raised and molded to do good. But no, uh, instead, Varys goes on to try and destabilize things. He wants to undermine Tommen's rule, which is why he kills Kevin Lannister, because he wants to put his pet project on the throne. And in So the, it's and, not the idea. And he's empowering like, Cersei in the meantime by killing Kevin, too. So it's not just murdering Kevin. He's plunging the realm into further instability in order to provide his answer. And that's kind of the thing that people in the chat are, are mentioning. Like he's that instability leads to a lot of violence. Uh, so it, it's pretty easy to see through his justification, the good of the realm. Like it's clearly his agenda, you know, mm-hmm. his version of that with his specific people. And there's some probably some revenge if he's Blackfire, you know, descendant, which it seems he is. So. He might be someone that we could see, I you know, putting a poll to the chat. But who? But chat, take a look at the list on the left, and tell me who is Varys worse than. And if we can come up with some consensus, you know, weak targets, maybe we can swap them in. Uh, you know, I will. Let's see what I'll do. Is now nah, I'll leave the seeds. I can show the seed numbers if I want to, but I'll just leave them off. You guys, take a look. You tell me. If you think Varys is... Well, yeah, the Hound is not, not on... So the middle list right here, these are all dishonorable mentions. I'm saying, is, is Varys worse than somebody in the brackets? Oh, no, we're not replacing John Con. <laughs> no, 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 no. John Connington is willingly heading into Westeros and eventually King's Landing with a plague. Because he wants to win a war like Varys and put his preferred person on the throne. But he's literally carrying around a plague. <laughs> that is worse. That is worse. <laughs> I hear Megor did nothing wrong. You didn't hear that here. Yeah, John Con, <laughs> like, you have to think about that for a second. Um, and he's a dick on top of that. But besides that. <laughs> so, Chet. You know, Chet is one of those ones where, nah, he's, he's pretty bad. It's not just the murder of Bessa that got him onto the Night's Watch. He's also a mutineer. He's a, he's a Mormont mutineer, so that, that's pretty despicable. Oh, no, no, not Kyburn. Kyburn, no, no, sir. She's all used up. One of the worst lines in the whole book, bro. <laughs> Kyburn's a serial torturer and a vivisector. <laughs> So Tyrion is one of the lowest seeds. Tyrion is somebody, if you want to say that Varys is worse than Tyrion, you might, that could be a debate. Um, let me pull up Tyrion's crimes real quick. He is potentially one that could get uh, bumped, but let's just review his crimes real quick. So the Taisha thing is complex. Tyrion's only uh, 13 or 14, and obviously Jaime and Tywin are orchestrating that, uh, and... Tywin is one of the worst people on this tournament because of that. Uh, but Tyrion did participate in that at the end. He, after everyone else had 
committed the R word, he did it too. So that uh, after he had married her. Um, so that is not, you know, it's uh, he's a victim in that scene, but he's also a perpetrator. <laughs> he's a he's also a client. Um, then there's Simeon Silvertongue, the musician who Tyrion killed and chopped up and put in stew. So that's forced cannibalism on other people. Um, then there is he killed Tywin, which is fine. That's Ty, you know that's their own beef getting settled. You know he deserved that, but he also murdered Shay, who was just doing her job in all honesty. <laughs> so that's pretty messed up. Um, and then there's Illyrio's bed slave. That's potentially the kind of the most abhorrent thing that the Tyrion does. Is it not only the R word, but it's like a sadistic, violent, really disgusting act. Um, and he's like feeding off of the fear and disgust of the person that he's victimizing. So it's really, like, it's, it's the one, I think George wrote that scene just because he felt like people had missed that Tyrion was a villain. George refers to Tyrion as a villain. So, um, and then he's fomenting war with Fagon by sort of pl playing with the whole politics of that um, and constantly talking about wanting to R word and kill his sister. So you tell me, um, Maynard James Plum, if you would be so kind, let us create a poll, Tyrion versus Varys. I think that will be a fun potential play-in, a play-in game, if you will. And we will see who you guys think is actually worse, Tyrion or Varys. See, there we go. Much quicker this time. A process, smooth as silk. <laughs> who is worse? Remember, you vote for the worst person. <laughs> Just to be clear, who is worse? Vote for the worst. Oh, this looks close. Yeah. This is close. Oh, Varys. Varys trying to oust Tyrion from the bracket. I was wondering if this would happen. I wanted to put Tyrion in there to make the point that he was a villain. But he. But I, I, I understand this. This looks... Yeah, it's close. But that's a 10-point margin. Um, in a United States presidential election, that's decisive. So, <clears throat> yeah, that, uh, these polls go quick. Yeah, they, they quickly... Um, maybe we'll have to talk and then do the polling because as soon as the poll opens, everyone votes, and that's done. So maybe that's how we should do it. Because uh, we might sway people while we're talking, and then people want to change their vote, and they won't be able to. So... We'll do that. We'll do three minutes of talking and then we'll vote. Because, yeah, these things are pretty much like a minute and these polls are over. So there you go. I'm going to call it. That is toast. Varys, I will, I, will, um, I will just edit the bracket here. And we just go to, sorry, well, you see a little behind the scenes, but such is life. Where is Varys? Or where is Tyrion, rather? I had Tyrion set to go against Tywin, too, so I thought that was going to be a fun debate. But Tywin's his own monster. So we'll go Varys and Tywin. That's actually a good pairing. That actually works. And then I'll click Save. And then just scoot that back over. Pay no attention to the window behind the curtain, behind the mask, behind the, you know... Yeah, there we go. The chat has spoken. Chat has spoken. So we, I will, I'll even put Tyrion back down here in dishonorable mention. That was good though. I, I that was a good close, uh, good close poll, good outcome. So real quickly, the Hound. The Hound seems like a villain, but really the only thing he did was kill Micah, which was a horrific thing. Um, he was following orders, but again, following Joffrey's orders, and he seemed to relish the act. He gloated after the fact. He did it violently and cruelly, rode him down and butchered him. Uh, so that's what makes the Hound the villain. So George establishes him as this character at the beginning. And then from there, all we ever do is slowly cut against that. He protects Sansa. He We learned oh, he was... His face was burned by his older brother when he was like six or eight because he stole Gregor's toy. I think I forgot to put that on Gregor's list of crimes, but that's horrible. 
Mm-hmm. And then we see, so it's mainly, so we, we see that, yeah, the hound was abused hor- horribly as a child, and he protects Sansa repeatedly. Um, and then we see him out on the road, and he has a weird relationship with Arya, where it's kind of aggro, but, you know, he's obviously threatening her and stuff, but he's also protecting her. And some people like to ship Sansa and Sandor, because it's like Beauty of the Beast, kind of. Uh, my favorite Sandor Sansa scene. Tim is the one where he comes to her at the battle of the black water with unclear intentions that could be very dark. Um, and he's in a pretty bad state. Uh, again, the fire trauma and all that stuff. And she sings the hymn of the mother and the roles flip around. And all of a sudden he becomes this like child who was never comforted you know, from the time that his face was burned. And Sansa is assuming the role of literally the mother archetype of the faith of the seven. And she's talking about stay their axes and heal their wounds. And like, he weeps and gives her his cloak and leaves. And like, Mm -hmm. it's clearly something that is complex because of, again, his intentions and the ages and all that. But like, it's an incredible moment for Sansa as well and shows the power of the archetypes of the faith. So your thoughts on Sandor or that scene there? Yeah, because uh, Sandor, what we have with Sandor is a redemption story, which is why he start. we have to have him start out as a sort of villainous figure so that when we see his growth, when we see the softer sides of him, and when we see him ultimately try, what what he's doing is escaping the cycle of revenge. It's what makes Clegane Bowl as much as some people in the fandom want it is actually unnecessary because it's a story of trying to escape the cycle of violence and abuse and all of that because one of our main running themes throughout the entire story is the fam is uh generational conflict people continuing the wars and the battles of their fathers and their grandfathers we see it with the wildlings and the watch we see it all we see it with the still even with the dornish even after dorn's been brought into the fold so the idea that the hound and the and the mountain have to have some kind of gigantic cathartic showdown is like no if the hound finds peace as the grave digger which seems to be the running theory that if that if sandor is still alive that he's that he is uh with that he's with the older brother and he is with uh, the broken men as the grave digger then he has found a form of peace and has been able to remove himself from this and find comfort and just and just live basically and uh, yeah i do agree that jamie should be on dishonorable mention uh not for killing king aries because that was probably the best thing he ever did but for obviously for pushing bran out the window and for various other less than honorable deeds um but yes uh under you know committing incest with cersei is treason and that undermined the stability of the realm significantly. So there is that too. Uh, yeah, so he's an honorable mention. We already talked about Jamie a bit. Uh, let's talk about Mandon Moore and Boros Blount. So both of them are complicit in Joffrey's abuse of Sansa. That's the first thing. Uh, and then Mandon Moore goes one step further and he tries to kill Tyrion, probably on orders of Cersei, I think is, is what the clues point to. Um, and he looks like a dead fish. So squisher vibes. But the main thing is like, um, that's corruption. The King's Guard is not supposed to be assassinating the hand of the king in the middle of a battle. Mm. So that's clearly like complete breaking of his oaths. It's dishonoring, you know, his knighthood and everything. So that plus the Sansa stuff, you know, Mandon Moore is pretty, pretty, pretty rotten. Um, he's right pushing at the line of getting into this tourney. But again, you'd have to show me somebody who's, <clears throat> you know, less bad uh, on there. So, <laughs> but yeah, like Mandon Moore, Chet, like that's kind of, kind of similar. These people are all going to lose in round one, let me tell you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter that much, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um I love how you went with treason for sleeping with his sister. I was just thinking about Jamie's violence. Yeah, tr- it is treason. And we have Girl Nettles. Hello. Hey, I'm on. <laughs> you are. Hi, guys. 
so sorry I'm late. You know, um, Sheep Stealer took me to Valeria to get my hair did. So <laughs> thanks for the time. Your, your voice sounds a little quiet. Are, you want to make sure you just have the right mic selected and that it's turned up all the way? Oh, now you're now you're muted. But that means you're changing things and probably on the way to fixing them. How about now? Yeah, I think I think we're, we're doing right. Okay, awesome, awesome. Hi. Cool. I was listening to you guys as I was driving, so uh, so yeah. <laughs> so you're up to speed. So we were just talking about Mandon Moore and Boros Blount, a couple of very despicable Kingsguard. Um, all the Kingsguard are a little bit despicable, especially Ares' Kingsguard. But um, yes, carrying like Tyrion dresses them both down when he finally gets to King's Landing. He's like, yeah, you're not supposed... Like, if the king tells you to do something stupid, like, ask Cersei or something first. Or me. Or, yeah. like... So. Yeah. I think Kingsguard get extra points for villainry because something happened between the era of Duncan the Tall type of Kingsguard where, like... They were held to a certain standard. Like, it wasn't just about being a good fighter. You had to have good morals so that we can trust you to use your fighting skills, you know? So mm -hmm. when Kingsguard misbehave, to me, it's like a monk misbehaving or like, you know, like I, I, I hold them to a higher standard. Like a, Absolutely. Like a, like a cop. Like, you're not supposed to be doing the shit that regular men are doing. 100%. That's, that's a great point to make. And that's why I was saying it's such a horrible thing for Mandon Moore to allow himself to be used as an assassin, you know, to take out the hand of the king in the middle of a battle where he's helping protect the city. Like, it's just dishonorable and irresponsible on so many levels. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Pretty Maris, I mentioned, just because she, d she does torture. However, when you read her backstory this is a case of hurt people hurting people and it's hard to get too worked up about it. She's committing her torture under the context of questioning as a member of this fighting company. So it's not like she's living in a shack, capturing people and torturing them. It's in the context of war sort of, and the abuse that she suffered is horrific. Um, she deserves a mention, but uh, it's a major mitigating factor. Uh, so, but she's terrifying. She's certainly villain coded and terrifying. They people talk about being given to Pretty Maris, and it's just like eh. so. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> female uh, Ramsey a little bit. Not just kidding. Oh well, but, yeah, yeah, Ramsey, right? Yeah. So, oh, let me let me. So you're are you up to speed on how we're doing this as far as who's on and the dishonorable mention? Okay, cool. So yeah, we're um, doing Harma dogs. Mention. What's that? I was agreeing. Okay. Harma Dog's Head kills dogs like every two weeks in order to make a standard, which means that she carries around the corpse of the dog on a stick. So she, there's some general murder as like a wildling warlord, I guess, but it's mainly the dog thing. It's just a, at least a dishonorable mention for killing dogs, right? We're all animal yeah. lovers here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what do you guys think about Stoneheart? What's her level of villainy? Hmm. I've seen people come, you know, feel different ways about this. Yeah, I've removed Stoneheart from Catelyn. So I do see her as a villain because we see her through Brienne's eyes. And Brienne knew Catelyn for who she was, right? So I don't know. I feel like anyone who punishes people just blankly, you have the last name Frey, like, like anyone who does that is a villain. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I can't show all 32 names at the same time here, but yeah, Ramsey, he's one of the top four seeds, Ramsey, and then Magor is a top seed, and uh, Ares is a top seed, and then Tywin would be the other top seed. So the way that we had to do this in order to sort them is we had to pick like tiers in f groups of four going down. Um, so I don't wanna put the numbers though, cause I don't wanna, biased people um everyone's got their different idea of you know who's what makes somebody horrible so um yeah stoneheart is kind of like there's definitely a commentary on how like well under 
when Barrick was running this show, we kind of knew what we were doing and it was kind of honorable, but now it's not really much honor to be found in this hill. So she's basically, you know, she's a, a revenant carrying out vengeance. We like it because it's mostly pointed at House Frey, uh, but it also got pointed at Brienne and Pod Payne, who Pod Payne is what? He's like 14. He's a squire. So his his level of culpability in war is debatable. Um, and yeah, so she's kind of villain coded, but lawful evil. Kimberly face, Lefay says that's yeah. cool. So I gave her dishonorable mention. It's not really like, mostly she's just interesting. Yeah. Cause it's, she's more of a magical being. Um, the big one to talk about here is blood Raven. I do not think, I do not see blood Raven as a villain quote unquote, but even I will admit that he is an ends justify the means type of person and has apparently done some bad things. According to some people, he's done lots of kin slaying and all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, Tim, I haven't heard from you in a second. What do you think on Blood Raven? And then Nettles, give your take. <clears throat> yeah, because Blood Raven is, uh, he's very much the, the ends justify the means type. The, we, if you don't want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. And that is like the way he's always conducted himself throughout his bit through through his business like he can say that he is doing everything in the in the way that like Pycelle might say everything I did I did for House Lannister Blood Raven in his own way is doing everything he does for House Targaryen which is why he's like so situated on the east making sure that there's never another Blackfire rebellion in his life and then after the wall his focus changes more to what's going on in the far far north but he's still willing to take a child like Bran, uh, lead him up there, and he knows full well what Bran is doing to Hodor. But he's not—he's not teaching him like, hey, you know, you're not supposed to skin change humans. He's not giving him the lessons that Varamir got that Varamir just completely ignored. Blood Raven True. is just straight up. Blood Raven's just straight up not telling Bran. He's keep, he's keeping this from him, so Bran doesn't even hey. know. Psst. Especially because since Bran's so young, like Bran doesn't realize that what he's doing to Hodor is is truly evil, is truly wrong. Because there, yeah, it's the strong yeah. vibes of manipulating him towards a specific outcome so that he's not hesitating at a certain moment about certain niceties. Yeah, you you have that vibe for the for the living Blood Raven. He's basically like a corrupt but effective CIA director. It's like total information awareness like yeah he keeps the realm stable uh but uh you know as long as you don't mind mm -hmm. being spied on all the time <laughs> so give yeah. your thoughts nettles i'm gonna put cleo back she's uh having a fit and i'll be right back my thoughts on blood raven are pretty simple villain no politician yeah that's i just see him as just as a politician um just someone who does something for the greater good. I mean, I didn't, I don't, I missed the first couple minutes of the stream. I don't know if you guys actually outlined your personal definition of what a villain is. And so I think for some people, they think that, oh, you do one bad thing. You're a villain for the rest of your life. I don't think that. I think that's a bad act. You did a bad thing. I think a person that's a villain is a mentality, a continuous mentality that you have. And there are people like that who wake up and they're like, fuck the world, fuck this. I'm gonna fuck shit up. There are people that, that wake up with bad intentions. And I feel like that is what a villain is. Um, Blood Raven, I do not think he wakes up every day thinking, how can I make things bad for everybody? Or how can I be selfish and get what I want? I don't think so. I think he thinks of the greater good. So you could take Blood Raven off this list <laughs> if it was up to me. If it was up to me, yeah. Because for me, I believe that like mor morality is relative; it's not universal. Everyone has their different opinion and ideal of what is moral, what is justice, what is good, and all of that. Which is why when we have like a like we when you weren't here, Nettles, we were talking about Olena Tyrell, and we can say like, well, is she evil because she? is complicit in Joffrey's murder. And, but then we're like, yeah, but it was Joffrey. Well, there are some who will say, well, murder is murder and murder is wrong, no matter who it is. But then there's others who will say like, no, 
She killed Joffrey. She did us a favor. We're going to give her a pass for that. Yeah, that's literally and the moment. I, like, people are like, oh, if you could travel back in time and kill Hitler. Like, that's what she did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. Mor morality, is, morality is relative. It's not universal. Everyone and her granddaughter right. was going to marry Hitler, so. Yeah, because sometimes, like, it is justified. And that is, like, another running theme of the story. Like, uh, George R. R. Martin, um, he was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War, but he has also said that doesn't mean that he is completely anti-war. He had said, like, if it was World War II, he would have served. It's just it, Vietnam is not something that he saw a good ideal that is worth fighting. So that is, and that is his moral stance when it comes to war. What is a justified war and what is an unjustified war? There you go. Well, good comments. I, I tend to and nettles to your point about Blood Raven, I do think it's this is the kind of thing where we have to draw a distinction. I mentioned Drogo and Balin, or Victarion rather, not Balin. Balin starts a war. But Victarion and Drogo both commit violence, including the R word um, and all kinds of mass violence. They're doing it in a cultural context where there's like customs behind it. So that is not quite the same. It's still bad, it's just not the same yeah. as Ramsey Bolton. Um, and right. so that's why there are levels to this thing here. So Blood Raven, I mean, he's done some crimes. There's no doubt he's got a crime hood or two in his closet. Uh, and like I said, I am a very, I tend to be a little bit on the anti-government side of things when it comes to like spying and information awareness. I'm an anti-monarchist, team small folk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, for me, Blood Raven mostly is trying to do the right thing. And we also have to remember this is a magical story. It's not purely political. And by the end of his life, he's obviously concerned with the others in the long night. He's on a very short list of people who are. And he's trying to move with all the manipulation of Bran that he's doing is in theory so that Bran can do something very important to help save the world. Blood Raven. Some yeah. people think Blood Raven is trying to help the others invade. I don't, you know, that's that would make him a villain for sure. If he's like, you know, secretly working for the others or something. But I just I'm not I'm not here for that myself. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We've pretty much talked about everybody. The Weeper, he's just kind of like a especially violent wildling. Uh, some of that comes down to whether or not he cuts people's eyes out after they're dead or like as he's killing them. Um, that makes it a little worse. Uh, but he's basically just a violent wildling. So he's honorable mention, um, like Harm a Dog's Head. And then the High Sparrow is complex on the show. The poor fellows are, are violent. They're beating people up and they're carving things in forehead. They're obviously like very bad news. We're not quite there yet in the books. They're not committing acts of violence. They're, they're mostly gathering to protect uh, the seps that have been defiled and despoiled and things like that. However, clearly the High Sparrow is a religious fanatic and he is cultivating religious fanaticism. And we know that can be a very dangerous weapon. And we have the feeling that it's going that way. So... He's honorable mention because he hasn't really done much besides torture one of the Kettle Blacks, which is kind of, I mean, it's not even the worst. It's really just intense questioning in the context of that society. They weren't like peeling his skin off. Um, <laughs> and you see how they, Cersei, like that's torture, what they're doing to Cersei too. Like that's psychological, waking somebody up everybody half every half hour and stuff. Like that's some Guantanamo Bay shit. Um, but it is not the kind of torture that Ramsey and the Tickler are doing. Either so again levels to the evil. Um, your thoughts on uh, the High Sparrow? Uh, Nettles go first, and then Tim. High Sparrow, yeah. I just well, I'm not sure of his intentions. Like it's not explicitly said. So if he, you know, um, when I watch the sh show, sorry to talk about the show, but when I watch the show, I have come to the conclusion. This is my opinion that this guy doesn't believe in the gods. He. he Everything is a lie. He just wants power. But he knows from being in close proximity to the High Lords that the best way to get power is to act like the barefootedness and talk about he knows all the, the buzzwords to say. So that is someone that I would characterize as a villain because of the willfully lying for a selfish need, for his, for his selfish wants, I mean. So like... So I see that just not even like the specific acts that he does, but that mentality of I'm going to use religion to control the masses and to get the upper hand over the monarchy. 
So we had High Sparrow on the list, Tim. And mm -hmm. this morning we swapped him out for Victarian based on what the feedback from the Discord. Because Victarian, we'll get to him. But he's done some pretty bad stuff. I uh, Killing his wife at the top of the list. So, uh, yeah. But what are your thoughts on the High Sparrow? I think he's mostly like a sneaky villain on the rise, but just hasn't really done anything yet to, to really merit the in the bracket. Yeah, exactly. But let me just say that's... one thing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Tim. Just to finish. No, I, I was done, but then I just thought of one thing. If the High Sparrow really believes in the gods, then I'll give him a pass. But if he's someone who doesn't even fucking believe in the gods and he's just doing all stuff, then that's what knocks him to villain, in my opinion. That's it. Noah Holland is saying he's taken women hostage. Are you talking about like random sex workers in King's Landing? Or are we just talking about Marjorie and Cersei? Because Marjorie and Cersei are royals. That's slightly different. I can't remember, like, yeah, some of this is like, I'm hoping that you guys will help me if there's anything I'm forgetting. Um, is he is he imprisoning, like, sex workers and stuff in King's Landing? That would be a little more villainous. Marjorie and her friends. Yeah, I mean, so potentially you could say, well, he's creating political instability by trying to get in this little feud between Cersei and Marjorie and adjudicate it all. Um, but at the same time, like, what is the role of the faith in King's Landing but to be a check on the power of the monarchy, which can be an unchecked, corrupt source of power? So we could debate that one. Um, I almost think, like, religious fanaticism could be a whole stream debate, talking about the various religious orders and stuff. Some people are suggesting that Melisandre could be taken off of the bracket in favor of someone. Let me just square y'all away because I actually objected at first to putting Melisandre on there too but Melisandre burns people alive which is pretty horrible uh, she's done it multiple times and she wants to burn a child alive and would have done so if Davos hadn't have smuggled Edric away so that she doesn't get off the hook for that she very much intended and has been begging to do it um, even worse and this is the real thing she is creating a broader religious context which justifies burning people alive. She's not just doing it. She's preaching and converting people to a religion where they think it's okay too. And that is very dangerous. It's like what we're talking about with the High Sparrow, but it's already happening and people are getting burnt. Um, so she also is probably uh, going to be involved in Shireen's burning and whatever, like the shadow baby is just kind of an abomination. She's siphoning Stannis's life fires and creating an assassin to kill someone. Like it's, it's unholy if, if anything is. So I really have a hard time seeing anybody on the dishonorable mention list that's worse than Melisandre. Tim, I think I went away from you before you got to give your thoughts on the High Sparrow. So uh, yeah. High Sparrow and Melisandre... And chat, you tell me who's worse than Melisandre at the Dishonorable Mention, and we'll put it to a vote. But I don't really think, I don't see it. Go ahead. Well, with the High Sparrow, like, as Nettle said, like, there hasn't been enough of him in the book to get a real good characterization of him. So we kind of have to default back to the version that we got on the show, which may or may not be where George wants to take him. But then the question becomes, like Nettle said, like, well, does he truly believe in the things that he's preaching? Is he serious when he says, like, we're all sinners in the eyes of the gods, all of us need to be humbled high and low? Or is he a con artist the way Elena Tyrell had said in the show? Is he like the, where, like, where she says, I know a charlatan, I've seen them. Like, you can say, like, we're all below the knees of the gods. And that kind of raised the sense, like, is he, which would, I would see him more like, in that sense, he'd be like the pigs in Animal Farm, you know, some animals are more equal than others which is, so it really comes down to like does he believe his own hype does he believe the things he's truly preaching or is are is he just using this as a means to try and bring down the mighty but he wouldn't hold himself to the same standards yeah so, so the people that are saying the high sparrow is worse than mel are saying the high sparrow's high sparrow is a hypocrite we know Melisandre's actually seeing magic. She believes in Azor High, which is real. So she's like trying, she is trying to save the world. And George calls her a misunderstood character, I think, for that reason. However, myself, I have been the victim of pe religious people that are had good intentions. So for me, having the intentions, like, it's worth noting 
but it's not really much of a pass for me. So I tend to look at what they've done. Right now, the High Sparrow just hasn't done much. Even if he is more of a hypocrite and a fraud, and I can see trusting him less, like if you're in the room with him or something, Melisandre has just done worse and would have burned a child and probably will burn a different child. So like that is, that's where the rubber meets the road. I think by the end of Winds of Winter, I might change my vote. Uh, but but yeah, um, so let's go ahead and do it, Maynard Plum. Let's just see. Let's do a vote. High Sparrow versus Melisandre. Who's worse? I'm just curious to see. Maybe there'll be an upset. Um, but yeah, that's why we're here. We're, here. we're here to see what the chat thinks. Doesn't the High Sparrow have trials or at least put you in the dungeon to think about what you've done? Doesn't he at least give you a chance? Versus Melisandre, who's like, ah, oh, the gods, oh, the rest of like, the Lord told me to burn you. She's like, aha, mm -hmm. you've committed a sin. We've got an excuse to burn somebody. Because she really wants to burn people to do magic. And so she seizes on any excuse to burn. It's pretty evil, man. It's pretty twisted. Yeah, so. If the um, High Sparrow was just killing people immediately, then yeah, you could put them in the same boat. But at least there's a chance with the High Sparrow. We're asking which one is worse. You're voting for the person who is worse. And you can define that any way you want to. You know, um, more hateable or whose crimes are the greatest. More detestable. Which one just makes you feel more disgusted? It's, it's up to you guys. I'm leaving it up to you. But yes, vote for the worst person. That's what we're doing all day. This is the badness. March badness. Villain competition. We're looking to get the worst person here. That'll be the winner. Don't just vote for Melisandre because you think she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is a wonderfully complex character. I have actually a lot of sympathy for Melisandre, despite the fact that she is a religious fanatic who burns people. I do think she's going to come in handy at the end and like, she spared Davos's last kid because his other kids died. Like, she has a heart, you know? It's just, she's a religious fanatic um, in a world where magic is real. And that makes it even more complicated. So let's go ahead and call it. Uh, so we've got, watching the stream, we've got 740 people watching. That's awesome. It's apparently, uh, some of y'all are content to just let everyone else vote um, and not vote. But uh, that's cool. We've got... About 250 people voting here. It's a little bit of a move for the High Sparrow in the late push, but it's still 69 to 31. And, uh, yeah, I think Maynard Plum, I think I'm just going to call these polls after, like, a couple of minutes like this. Um, I don't really see the need to run the stopwatch. It's You can sort of see when it is, uh, when, the, when the, the margin is clear here. So, last call for votes. If you're sitting there on the couch and want to help the High Sparrow win, now's the time. But I'm proud of you, chat. <laughs> yeah, Varys has been moved into the bracket. So he is, he is a bad person. All right, go ahead and call, we'll go ahead and call that. Very good. So that's how it's going to work. That was an example of how we'll, how we'll do this to decide. So I think we've gone over all of the dishonorable mentions. I did just add Jor Mormont. Who, oh my gosh. we just have to remind people, is not Ian Glenn. Ian Glenn is very charming and handsome. He's a wonderful gentleman and a great audiobook reader. And he makes Jorah seem a lot more likable and reasonable than, on, than in the books. But if you just remember the books, he's a bad person. He was trying to sell poachers into slavery. Um, then he fled dishonorably, bringing dishonor on his house. He was a pathetic sort of um what's it uh uh when you um when you like uh fanboy a girl online and just like what's it called um a cuck like stan no like you send her money and like um you know comment on all her pictures simp? simp yes I mean, yeah he yes, sold he's, i mean yeah, he he sold men into slavery the chat so that simp he simp simp <laughs> yes jora yeah. hella simp for he's, less go ahead yeah, I was gonna say he's he sold men into slavery so that he could pay for his uh for his wife. gold digging wife's like high high life high lifestyle. 
And then he, he creeps sad. on Daenerys, and he also mm -hmm. is informing on Daenerys while pretending to be her friend for like three and a half books, much longer than he would like to say when he finally is forced to admit it. So he's pretty dishonorable, uh, double simp, and without he's just a man without honor at this point. And then we see him last with Tyrion and Penny, and he's basically just feeling sorry for himself instead of doing anything useful with his life still. So we'll see if that changes. Uh, but yeah, he's he's scum, but not a villain. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, whatever word you want to use. Uh, I just, you know, my whole kick lately is not to use label words. I prefer to just describe what people are doing because you see yes. how people use the label words online, you know, to just shut down <laughs> the conversation instead of talking about what's actually going on. So let's so go smart. ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a little thing I'm doing, trying to get it going. Um, all right. So real quick, before we move into the tourney, are there any names, chat, on the dishonorable mention list that we'd like to put up for a vote to get into the tournament? I think we're good, but you let me know. What's the worst name on this dishonorable mention list? And are they worse than anybody in, in this bracket? I, I, I think we're pretty good. Oh, you're not going to get Blood Raven in there. We just took Tyrion out. We just took Tyrion out for Varys. Wait, Tyrion's not on the villains list? He was on the villains list, but we put it, we put him to a vote against Varys, who was in Dishonorable, okay. and Varys won. So Whatever. But yeah. It's up to the chat. Chat's the jury. I would I mean, put yeah. personally. I disagree. It's, yeah. it's because Peter Dick. For a, for a tiny man, Peter Dinklage casts a large shadow, and he made Tyrion too damn likable in the show that it, it 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 overshadows the more unsavory aspects of him in the book. Well, we, de like we detailed his crimes. We did. We did not gloss yeah. over them. We definitely detailed them for anybody coming in late. And he is a villain. There's no question. Uh, I had him on the list, but people said that Varys', Varys instability and just ridiculous hypocrisy, you know, is worse. Um, and this is the mm -hmm. thing about it is that some of these crimes are very personal. Like Tyrion's abuse of uh, the Illyrio's bed slave is horrific and very personal. However, um, the scale of Varys' crime, he's causing instability that causes hundreds and thousands of people to die. And there's going to be so, assaults and things in, the, in that instability as well. We just don't see, we don't get the stories. I just think it's weird that the chat wants Victarion to be on the villains list for killing his wife in a crime of passion. But they don't want Tyrion to be on the list for killing Shay in a crime of passion. Whatever, that's fine. Tyrion's well, so, my favorite character. Victari so that's Victarion fine. was added late. Um, in I moved the High Sparrow out and put Victarion in this morning. I can see saying that Tyrion is worse than Victarion. Um, <laughs> that is kind of a toss up for me. The thing is that all these types of people are gonna lose in the first round, so it only matters so yeah. much. But I can yeah. see, yeah, I mean, Victarion and Tyrion, that's kind of, it's pretty similar. Um, yeah. Pycelle is, is, is a pretty bad person, but who, you, who do you take an out? That's what you got to tell me. Yeah. There's no weak links want, in this tourney. I don't want anything to change. I, I think we're good to go. But mm. I just want to say that Miri Mazdor is the worst, for, in my opinion, in all of the dishonorable mentions. Hater. <laughs> So and that's all. What, I don't want to go into it, but I hate her. <laughs> well, because she's so that's a complex one. Debating the ethics of Mary Mazdur and is like that's an old one. That was an old debate when I got to the forums in 2014. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm tired People, of it too, yeah. actually. So let's go ahead and start the tourney. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can uh, see the names a little bigger, easier to see for the people at home. We'll start at the top. And. Ramsey and Cal Drogo. Obviously, Ramsey a top seed here, but let's talk about the crimes of both. I'll just zoom in a tiny bit. So, Ramsey Bolton, latest Lady Hornwood. That is murder and torture. Um, and totally innocent character, did nothing wrong. Uh, Domeric, he pretty much killed Domeric, so that's murder and usurpation. Um, Theon, just. All that, okay? Extensive torture of every on every level, sexual, psychological, physical, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Um, Jane, J all of his dogs are women that he has R-worded and tortured and murdered. So he, it's the most dishonorable cherry on top of all of that stuff at the end as he names his dogs after these victims. Um, and then there's general torture, sadism, and murder. It's going to be hard to beat Ramsey in any round. He is, he is horrific. Yeah. Um, this one's easy. And then Drogo, Drogo's crimes. Tim, um, go ahead and list, list Drogo's crimes for us, if you would. Uh, general R-wording, pillaging, murder, mass enslavement, and yeah, Daenerys, child, bri child bride. Uh, and the thing with Drogo is, is like, what's hard to separate Drogo is that when it comes to the Dothraki, it's like the pillaging and stuff. It's like, we can say on our moral grounds, like, yeah, this is bad. But at the same time, it's like, that is so, it's like with the iron board, it's so ingrained in their culture. They don't see an issue with it. They don't recognize it as an issue. They see it as this is what you're supposed to be doing. And that comes back to the whole morality is relative thing. And it's like, well, you can say, well, then, but this is their cultural ideals. But then you're like, that other be like, well, the culture is wrong. But then that's like, well, who are you to say that looking, you know, as an outsider looking in? Ramsey crucified uh, 150 some ironborn after they submitted under a white flag. So that is, yeah. that is horrific and dishonorable. Um, now, Drogo... We should be pointed out, not only buys a child bride, he sells people to Slaver's Bay. That's what the Dothraki do. They raid and pillage towns like the Lazarine, and then they, after they're done R-wording and murdering certain people, they round up the survivors and they bring them down to Slaver's Bay and pass them off to those disgusting people like Krasnismo Neklaus, who's another favorite in this tourney. So... Well, again, Don't like, miss their... that. Just because the Dothraki have a cool warrior culture but to justify it all, well, they were too weak, so they lose and they get sold into slavery. That's the God's will or whatever. But even, um, but even that, in, in the Dothraki culture, they're not sold. They're gifts. The Dothraki don't have a system of commerce in but, their idea. But they do These sell the slaves gifts. to... These right, yeah. They are giving, right. The gifts they are receiving. Yeah, so... So yeah, Drogo is is pretty bad person. Um, but let's go ahead and and run the poll, Maynard Plum, if you would. Ramsey versus Drogo. Let us ask the chat and see how it shakes out. See how many votes Drogo gets. This is fun, isn't it? Isn't this a good idea for stream? Yeah, Nettles, wait, do you like my frame? I, I do. I do. I love it. Actually, hold on. I'm trying to vote. <laughs> I'm trying to vote too. I can't vote. Tim, if you want to, you can. I, 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 we should at least tell the chat who we vote for at the end. But uh, yeah, definitely want to let them vote first. And so, yeah, 91%. That's, that's about right. 90%. Obviously, I'd, I'd vote for Ramsey. But the more <laughs> I thought about Drogo, the worse he seems. So it's, uh, he's, he's likable enslaver, killer, butcher guy, you know. Yeah, I guess I'm yeah. curious for the chat. You who voted that Drogo is worse than Ramsey, I would love to hear why. Get your Twitter fingers going. I'd love the scale. to hear. It's this couple people have mentioned it's the scale. He affects more people. Um, so that's that's always a thing here. It's like even if the crimes are more foul for one person, in a certain perspective, if you're affecting thousands and thousands of people instead of a couple hundred that could be considered worse. How you could be doing more north? good by killing Drogo. How many people are then in the by north? That, by, that measure, by that measure, the High Ramsey Sparrow should have been worse than Mel. But the High Sparrow hasn't killed anyone yet. No, but the Faith of the Seven being the majority religion in Westeros, he has the more potential to do harm than Mel does, where R'hllor is a... Potential, yes, only... but we don't do pre-crimes yeah. here. This isn't Johnny Mnemonic or whatever. Hang on a second. Um, Miriam Manister did nothing wrong. She was after justice against, um, you know, our words and, and murderers, yes. Um, I, so I very much am sympathetic to that argument, by the way, Lady Catherine, even though I'm very pro Danny, and I get both sides of this, essentially. I'm shocked no one has killed the horse lords. F them, Drogo is poop. That's valid. Thank you. Uh, and hate Ramsey from Brazil. I hear you, Bruna. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we can use Super Chats for if you want to sound off, guys. So um, 
I am leaving nettles. I'll, go ahead. But I'm just I'm leaving it to the chat to decide what their criteria is. If they want to consider the scale or just the horrificness of it, um, it's more fun if I leave it to them. I think as opposed to forcing. People. Oh yeah, the jury's always ripe. I just want to say that like Ramsey is affecting the north. Aren't there a lot a good population of people in the north? Or yeah, I was like trying to add it up mentally. It. Like, what has he done? Who has he affected so far? Potentially by the ends of, of Winds of Winter, his scale could be catching up to Drogo. Um, like I said, there's a certain amount of Ironborn, there's Hornwood. I, I didn't go through, I mean, I'd have to add it up. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and call this. Ramsey obviously wins. And so um, I will give Maynard Plum just a second to update the bracket. And then I have to just hit refresh and then it should appear, so. Um, I will go ahead and get us started with the next conversation, which is Joffrey and Rorge. Um, Rorge, do you want to uh, uh, describe Rorge's crimes, Nettles, if you would? Rorge, he's on the hook for General Grape. Can I say Grape? So you we're trying to say it? R word if we can, just so we don't R -word. Say, R -word. say it a million times. But if it, okay. whatever, you know, do your best. Yep. General Aring, murder, sadism, as being part of the Bloody Milmers, be, uh, being mean to Arya and Brienne. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> and he raised and trained Biter. Psychological abuse and murder. Yeah, that was the thing that popped into my head at the end. It was like, oh, he, he found Biter as an orphan in King's Landing and then like raised him to be a feral fighting pit monster. Like, I do think he's part squisher, but like whether he is or not, like he didn't have to be raised that way, right, Tim? Right. Yeah. So, I don't because this is like another one. Like it kind of seems pretty obvious though, because Joffrey is the. I mean, Joffrey's having high people of high nobility killed. That like, he has, he has the much, much far, farther, far-reaching uh, power here as a king. Whereas Warge is just like what some. Guy who basically runs dog fights, I guess, is what we would compare him to in the modern world. Hmm. Yeah, um, I, you know, well, let's go over Joffrey's crimes. So animal cruelty, he starts off with the cat, very young. So misrule and sadism, you remember the bread riots, he literally got his crossbow and fired it at the hungry people. So sadism on top of misrule, uh, which, again, when you're the king is very important. Uh, Micah. That was murder by proxy. Um, Sansa, obviously. Uh, serial abuse and sadism and assault and things. Um, and then he's having people's tongues torn out. He's flinging people over the wall. He's doing cruel executions and harsh justice. Um, so really the only redeeming thing is mitigating is the word, not redeeming, mitigating, is his age, um, obviously. However, uh, he's doing that stuff too so i'll leave it to you you know rorge is about as bad a person as exists in the world uh really i mean he's constantly threatening murder and and violence to people um and yet joffrey is equally monstrous at such a young age if he had he would be like king rorge but much worse had he not been killed by elena so this one, I think, is, um, as far as the rankings go, this is like an 8-9 match. Like, these people are similarly ranked here. So I have no idea how this vote's going to go. Nettles, do you have any final words on these two? I would pick uh, Rorge, like, in which, in which I'm surprising myself because I thought anyone who's up against Joffrey, I would always choose Joffrey as the worst. Um, I'm not taking scale into account. I'm taking... I'm just judging this by who the person is and if they're redeemable. Mm. And I feel like Rorge is bad, like through and through, and there's nothing, you know, I've seen what I feel like is restraint from Joffrey. I, I know Joffrey's bad, but I feel like Joffrey could have done even worse. The fact that he, it, if Joffrey was truly, truly bad, he would have killed Cersei immediately upon sitting the throne because of her power over him. And he didn't. Rorge is someone who, who saw a biter, an innocent, and turned him into a lech. That is someone who's like evil it's pretty bad. through and through. That means you'll take an innocent and make it 
meanwhile, Joffrey is almost like a victim of circumstance, maybe. Maynard, go ahead, with the, Maynard go ahead with the poll. Tim, final thoughts. Yeah, for me, I am taking scale into account. For, so for me, it's Joffrey. Because um, remember, like, I'm remembering, the, you know, the riots at the riots in King's Landing, the food riots, and Joffrey telling, like, kill, you know, basically saying kill them all because he got hit with a cow turd. Like, he is ordering the deaths of hundreds and hundreds of people. Now, Rorge, if he's, we could say, yeah, Rorge would do the same thing if he were in that seat of power, but he's not. So his influence is nowhere near as far reaching as Joffrey's is. It seems like most people agree with you. Um, and Joffrey's kind of just like his shadow over the story is just bigger. And that's going to influence people as well. Um, so like I said, it's up to you guys how you want to decide who is the worst or who, if you had one time travel, um, where would arrow, you know, who would you send it at is that's really the thing to me. Like if you could send a, a, a blood Raven guided weirwood arrow right into one of these MFers craniums, like who, who's it going to be? So in that context, it's easier to say Joffrey, I think because of just his, yeah, he's, you don't want King Rorge. Rorge the Rorge the cell sword is one thing, but King Rorge is even worse. So let the That's why yeah, we'll, let, let the vote go here a second longer. But yeah, it's, it looks like a clear win for Joffrey. It looks like a clear win for Joffrey. Get your votes in. Don't don't make me hold this thing out forever. Get your votes in. But yeah, yeah you someone can... said nettles. Someone said nettles convinced me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, it is. Uh, yeah. The main the main thing about Joffrey is that, yeah, he is. Well, I think that teenagers should be called teenagers. Um, I'm not a fan of calling teenagers children. They're, what people really mean when they say that is a minor. But that's a that's a different word than child. Minor is anyone under 18. A child yes. is like 10 or younger, 11 or younger. You know, Three. once you're. Pre-puberty. Yeah. Pre -puberty. Once you're a teenager, you're a teenager. There's different words and different... But teenagers are in a transition phase between childhood and adult. That's why some of their life is that of a child, but they are also now driving and thinking about what career they want and doing adult things like that, potentially getting each other pregnant, hopefully not. Um, so, yeah. Um, all children are minors, but not all minors are children. And neither children nor minors should be coal miners. Because that's really bad. <laughs> uh, let's call this one and poll. that We've got a clear win for Joffrey. 300 votes. Uh, next up is Amory Lorch and Jano Slint. Get your barf buckets ready. So Jano Slint is just kind of a huge raging a-hole. He's just ha so hateable. And the reason why, you may not remember exactly. When we meet him, he's Lord Commander of the Gold Cloaks. Rampant corruption. Half the people in the entire Gold Cloaks got their jobs through corruption and pay off Jano's slint. So he's taking bribes from everyone, which means all those, these are bad cops. This is the head of the bad cops. He is hiring bad cops. Um, and then when uh, John Arryn finds two witnesses to testify against him, they both turn up dead. So he's actually committed murder um, to cover up all these crimes. Uh, so corruption, bribery, nepotism. Um, then he enabled Cersei and Joffrey when he betrayed Ned. Then he gets to the Night's Watch, which betraying Ned is actually not that much of a thing because it's like he was, he got, bri Littlefinger bribed him. Like, like, what are we really arguing? Like, oh, he didn't take the bribe the right way. Like, he took a different bribe than we thought he did. That's, this is all corrupt. Like, this is Ned's, one of Ned's few sins is dipping into allowing Nid Littlefinger to bribe him, right? <sighs> Let's not get into Ned. i um, do a whole stream on Ned. But this is Jano Slint. So he gets to the Night's Watch. Then he refuses John's orders, which is mutiny. And John cuts his head off. So that's him. Amory Lorch. He's the one that uh, R-worded and murdered Princess Rhaenys in the Sack of King's Landing. And if you reread these quotes, it is awful. Um, Tywin is talking to Tyrion about it. And he's like, I asked him why he had to stab her so many times. And he said, it's because she kept kicking me or something. Um, so this is a four-year-old girl, like 30 plus stabbings. Like it's just, the guy's a psychological monster. He's not just a violent thug for hire. He's a psycho. 
Um, and he participated in the, in the sack of King's Landing. And then, of course, he's one of Tywin's dogs uh, pillaging the countryside. So you guys give your thoughts here. And Maynard, go ahead and cue up that poll. Because um, I, I, I don't... Is there any way Jeno Slint wins this? I mean, to me, it's Amory Lorch. Yeah. I mean... Rabies doesn't even hit a Amory Lorch's first child murder. During the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion, he throws a three-year-old down a well. Oh. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I forgot really? about that. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Amory Lord, Amory Lord threw the last Lord Tarbeck, a three-year-old boy, down a well in Tarbeck Hall during the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion. Oh. Yeah, that's he's a dark. He's one of those dark horse contenders where you don't think, oh, the worst person in Ice and Fire, but like, we'll see if we'll see who can beat him. We're going to have to decide at some point between him and somebody that equally terrible. So this was looks like a pretty easy poll here. 223 votes in. 90 yeah, to 10. Saying, the text says that Amory uh, stabbed Princess Rainey's 50 times. And that's very different from 30. And it's like, imagine a three-year-old. You're going to run out of places to stab. Meanwhile, if you ordered Janos to do that, I could see him flinching. Like he might go like this, and just once the the baby's dead. Oh, did Jeno Slint um, kill one of Robert's bastard children in the in this in the brothel? I don't know if that's a show only. I can't remember because I mix them so much because I watch and read. Yeah, it still has to be Amory Lorch though. He's so monstrous. It's Amory Lorch. But I'm saying even if Jenos did the same thing, I could see him doing one and being like, "Okay, I'm done with it." Meanwhile. The stamina to stab something 50 times. There is something rotten inside of you. So it, uh, uh, Genos ordered it in the books. He didn't do it because he's because he's gutless. He's more of a coward. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this is an easy one. We're going to go ahead and end this poll. Um, yeah, that's Amory Lorch easily. Oh, boy. He didn't shower after talking about that guy. That's just. Whew. OK, so here we go. Craster and Piat Pre. Craster is more obvious. Let me just give you Piat Pre real quick. He is attempting to enslave and vampire, magically vampire, and eventually murder Daenerys. So the extrapolation tells you that he's doing that to other people, or the warlocks are, and he's he's out. He's the lore. He's out there in the world. Recruit, come to my temple so we can psychically vampire you. So that's pretty terrible. Um, it's, it's like psychic R wording. Um, and he, again, how many others? So, and he's just, you know, he's kind of got the predator vibes with the, um, with the shade of the evening being like bad candies, like want some candy, little girl, you know, but then there's <laughs> Craster. Um, you're just, we all know what he did. So it's coming up with the right word. It's like, it's actually enslavement as well as R wording and incest and then other worship. Um, and probably murdering Night's Watchmen. So, uh, Nettles, your thoughts on Craster and Piatpri? I just want to say, first of all, you did such a good job of, like, pitting... Just the choice of putting all these people against each other because it's making me scratch my noggin. Like, it's not easy. Like, the crimes are so similar. Um, it's, yeah, it is. It's tough. And, Maynard, go ahead and get ready with this, with this poll. I think this is going to be another easy one. Yeah, I mean... Ugh. Craster. For me, Craster is worse just because of like, how do you even look at the face of your child and and copulate mm -hmm. with it? How do you do it? He's got to win at least what? one round. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna. Say, it's, it, yeah, it's exactly what Nettle said. Like when it, I mean, when it comes to rapists, it's like this is already the. It's already one of the worst crimes that you could inflict on another person, but when you t but, but then you add an extra layer to it of it being your own children that you're doing that to, that it, your own daughters, and then the murder is sacrificing your own sons. Like, how do you look at your own child and commit such heinous acts? Just add so much. I mean, at least with Pi and Pri. While he might be killing people, sacrificing them to the undying and whatever, they're like they're strangers to him. Go ahead and drop Craster, the poll, Maynard. Go ahead, Tim. 
I'm just saying it's 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 just a whole other level of craster. Yeah, he's it's just so gross. It's so gross. And then like I said, those black sausages, there's a whole theory by Painkiller Jane. If you want to search Painkiller Jane Craster sausages, there's a lot of clues that those are Night's Watch brothers. Okay. <laughs> the black blooded sausages, you know. So they're frozen and uh yeah, down in the larder. Um so yeah, let's this is yeah, this is gonna be People were ready. They were ready to vote for Craster. I do think Pyat Pri is like, it's slept on how evil that is. Imagine falling into the hands of the warlocks and waking up and they're vampiring you and you don't have a dragon and you've been lulled to sleep with drugs. Like, I mean, it's, it's really bad stuff. And again, how many others? That place has been there for thousands of years. So I don't know how long Pyat Pri's been working for him, you know, but... He's a, he's a pretty bad dude. I, there we go. We got him up to 5%. <laughs> but yeah, this is Craster. I mean, at least with Pi Pri, we can rest knowing that he has been chopped up by Euron and fed to other warlocks. He has. That's true. That's, that, is, that is true. <laughs> but we will get to Euron later. Yeah, Craster's fate was too kind. So, all right. This one is, that's an easy one. And we've got a clear winner. And the winner is Craster. Well done. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. So we already talked about Melisandre. We listed her crimes. But again, burning people alive, creating a religious environment where multiple people think now it's okay to burn more people alive, and chomping at the bit to burn even children alive, and probably will burn Shireen and Shadow Baby unholiness. Kyburn was kicked out of the Citadel for committing vivisection. Vivisection means... Cutting you open while you're... It's dissection while you're alive. It's horrific torture. It's, hor it's monstrous, sadistic. Um, it's just horrific. And then we have, again, he sets up shop in the Red Keep, and what does he do? He starts torturing more. Like, he... His whole... All he wants to do is to have a dungeon studio so that he can peel people apart and, like, understand the workings of pain and misery. Um, so... Again, she's all used up, he says to Cersei, about one of the people that he's used up, um, a woman. So, yeah. And then there's necromancy and enabling Cersei's misrule and generally being a creepy grandfather. Uh, Tim, your thoughts? Yeah, because with Kyburn, there's a lot to it because he's also, I mean, George, I've said like George wearing his influences on his sleeves, like there's the whole... Dr. Frankenstein and uh, Herbert West reanimator if we, when we want to pull in the Lovecraft angle on this. But at the same time, it's like the knowledge that he's acquiring can be useful, I guess, in a way. It reminds me of how like a lot of what we know about certain diseases and things come from some pretty dark places that, that we don't need to name specifically, but rhyme with Yahtzee. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also the Japanese, like Unit 7, what we know about frostbite is because of what Unit 731 did to, did to the Chinese, because we would, ne it's, we would never be able to run experiments like that on, on willing participants, but we know of it because of what happened there. So Kyburn kind of falls into that line of like, it's, it's horrible, but at the same time, it's like, there's at least some good that can come out of it Yeah. here. Yeah. Well, I will just say it wasn't just the Yahtzees either. Um, th there's all kind. I mean, the med the early medical profession is pretty. There's some pretty horrific stories. Um, so oh, let's yeah. not trigger my 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 doctor phobia or hospital phobia right now, though. So um, Kyburn does trigger that for me. And go ahead and run the poll, Mister Maynard James Plum. Um, I think this is an interesting one because. Kyburn, like, there is some scale here because he's enabling Cersei's misrule and he's going through multiple victims here and how many more will he have if he keeps Cersei in power and he's also doing necromancy. Melisandre, the main thing is, again, creating the context where more horrors will happen. Uh, so you guys decide. I'm upset at the chat for, for voting Kyburn as worse than Melisandre. That's crazy to me. Kyburn is a scientist. He's not cutting people open because... <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch. 
He's he is what else would you call him? He's this is the pursuit of knowledge. And he's fucking successful. I don't see Robert you volunteering. Swan. I don't see you volunteering. No, bitch, I got a dragon. Don't ever. I got a dragon. I got a dragon. No. But I'm just saying, like, if Kyburn was cutting people open just to see what happens or just because I want to cause people pain, yes, he's a villain. But he's cutting people open to learn. Melisandre is, is burning people, people to fight the others and summon winds to sail faster to fight the others. It's very important as well. No. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You can't. The thing, oh, I'm doing it in the name of religion is I've known so many people who have left religion once something bad happened and they've just left the religion. The, the moment your God said to burn an innocent person, you should have been like, oh, not following that God. Correct. Absolutely. We're not endorsing any actions by anyone on this list. We just want to make that clear. They need these fictional actions by these fictional characters we're not endorsing in any way um let's see how the chat is it's kyburn 75 to 20 tim go ahead yeah oh no i was just i was just doing the thing from jay and silent bob the fictional characters yeah well blood and cheese money for lovely nettles too martin crow says thank you thank you martin crow we'll go ahead and call it kyburn is the winner Kyburn is the winner. Oh, let me uh, refresh here and get Amory Lorch's victory up on the board and Craster. Sorry, I'm not keeping up with that. I will, I will do better. <laughs> so oh, you yeah, can see the scores good. here, the lookups. Very, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very horrific. All right. So next up, Cersei and Littlefinger. Whoa. Heavyweights. Let me just drink this a bit. See, their crimes are so big, I've got to shrink it to fit them all. Okay. This one's easy. Okay, so Cersei pushed her friend down a well, Lar Heatherspoon. Um, she committed treason by having incest kids with her brother. Uh, she helped murder King Robert, which understandable because Robert abused her and stuff, but nevertheless, that's treason and regicide. Uh, she fomented the War of the Five Kings. Several people did that, Littlefinger as well, but Cersei also did that. Uh, and she gives people to Kyburn. So whatever Kyburn's doing, Cersei is enabling. Um, then we have Littlefinger, who probably fomented Robert's rebellion by lying to Brandon about, about Leanna having been abducted, and definitely fomented the War of the Five Kings by convincing Lysa to murder John Aaron and then send a letter to Cat that lied to the Starks and got them to come to King's Landing, suspecting the Lannisters. So we started two wars, um, which is responsible for all measure of anarchy, lawlessness, mass murder, war, treason, and R-wording. Um, he killed John Aaron, killed Lysa Aaron, killed Ned Stark, essentially, um, or at least led to his, you know, downfall, which led to Joffrey killing him. Um, then there's Sansa, who he kidnapped in his grooming. And this is all done, most pathetically, because he's bitter about Brandon and Kat and this little thing that happened when he was like 15. So, medals take it away. <laughs> Tim, get fire so up easy. after her. This is so easy. Cersei's worse than Littlefinger. Leave Littlefinger alone. Littlefinger. Cersei's a worse than Littlefinger. Fuck yeah! What the hell? Really? Littlefinger is hey, a no boy F -words. who had. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Littlefinger is a boy who had nothing, and so of course he's going to thirst and grasp and look up, and he wants to fill that void. I n I never want to feel like nothing again. Cersei was born with everything, and she's still not satisfied. That is a messed up person, rotten on the inside. But look at what they've done. Yes. Like, I, it's even in the context of what they do, it doesn't make sense. Like, Cersei, you have power. You have privilege. You have money. Why are you doing these but things? But Littlefinger does most of his stuff when he's, when, after he has privilege and power as well. Right, but he does not have as much as Cersei, and he has not gotten to where he wants to be. He started Cersei two wars. He started two wars. And so did Cersei. Tim, go and ahead. What's your thoughts? And then Maynard, go ahead and launch the launch the poll, and let we'll let Tim guide these people here. Yeah, actually, this one's actually tough for me because they're both both pretty bad. I mean, like, yeah, I can see Nettles has a point. Like Cersei did. Cersei was born literally with a golden spoon in her mouth and still can't still can't be satisfied. Littlefinger, we can see the justification for him wanting to make his way in the world um but at the same time it's like little finger is such a troll 
And it's so we it's it's and it's unclear what exactly Littlefinger wants. Like, is he just a narcissist or what really he is? He literally his end wants goal? to get back at Lysa and Kat and Brandon and Ned by grooming Sansa and taking down House Stark and, and House Tully. Like he's it's the most pathetic incel shit ever. I just have to say so, that. So Cersei is like so? at least like fighting for her family in the Game of Thrones or something. Like, I mean, you know. Uh, no. No. <laughs> well, looks like the chat agrees with Littlefinger being worse, but these are Beth these are gonna be hard. It's only gonna get harder, folks. It is only gonna get harder. <laughs> Now, don't pull your hair out, Nettles. It's too pretty. Don't pull it out. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be burning some people with my dragon that are in the. Watch chat. out, Nettles is gonna be on the villain list by the end of this. <laughs> Girl, Nettles, the YouTuber, <laughs> versus Mad King Harry's. <laughs> All right, we've got 300 votes in. It looks like this is a little finger win. A little bit of a move towards Cersei at the end, but we got. Yeah, final final call for votes. I'm about to kill this. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. So next up, these are those those were heavyweights, guys. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. But again, we ranked them all top to bottom, and that's yeah. who ended up pitted up against each other. So Bruce Bolton, Walter Frey, kind of similar here. These are very these are the kind of vassal lords you do not want to have. Um, they both they they're both red wedding perpetrators and they were both vassals to the Starks. So this is treason and murder and betrayal and guest right violation, which even is older than any governments or law. It's like the ancient tradition of Westeros. They broke that too. They murdered not just the Starks at the Red Wedding, but thousands of troops that got covered with those burning tents that were soaked with oil, burned alive. Um, Tywin sits there and goes, oh, it's better to kill 12 people at a wedding. Like, no, you didn't kill 12 people at a wedding. You, you cheated, and instead of defeating an army in the field, you dropped burning tents on their heads. So Roos and Walter both did this. Um, Roos did the Ramsay's mom thing. He claimed the Lord's right. He committed our word um, with this woman under the corpse of her husband whom he had just killed. These were newlyweds. Ramsay, or Roos Bolton rolls up and murders the husband, and our words, the wife, and that's where Ramsay comes from. Um, and then he enables Ramsay. Um, so then Walter Frey, of course, is just extra, extra slimy. He's obviously a sadist. He loved the Red Wedding. He cackled with glee, um, and he is just generally slimy with all his remarks, and, like, you know, he's cultivating all the vibes at Frey Manor with all these people that are set against each other. So, Tim, go first. What? What do you what, what do you do with these two? <laughs> yeah, this is like okay. I'm looking one at the ages here because it's like Walder has been around more, has been around longer, obviously, and has more has had more time to do bad things, and yet he has not been able to rise at the rate that Roos has. But on the offset, Walder's phrase "evil will continue." Well, I guess we could say his evil can continue because of how many Aries he's leaving. Whereas with Roos, there's actually the high probability that House Bolton might die out with him because all he has is Ramsay. And it seems like the Boltons are actually, we don't really meet any other Boltons. They seem to be like very slim. So I'm actually going to give it, some, say, Walder Frey's the worst because he's like Aegon the Fourth writ small. You think like Aegon yeah. the Fourth and his last Good comparison. final. Good comparison. Yeah, his last, like his final middle finger to the realm is legitimizing all of his bastards and leading to all of these Blackfire civil wars. For Walder Frey, it's on a much smaller scale, but there is the theory of the Frey succession crisis because of how many children and grandchildren and all the different branches of the Frey family that Walder Frey is going to be leaving his own family in that same sort of situation where when he dies... His children and grandchildren are probably going to tear each other apart, fighting over who gets to who gets the twins. And somebody's mentioning Jingle Bell. Rest in peace, Jingle Bell. Walder basically just sacrifices him uh, in the middle of the Red Wedding, so that was his grandchild or something. Um, your thoughts, Nettles Maynard? Go ahead, and launch the poll. 
I say Roos is worse. I mean, these are so close, neck and neck, like like you said, both taking part in the Red Wedding. But so I have to go by another criteria, which is who am I most afraid of? If I'm alone in a room with Roos versus if I'm alone in a room with Frey. It's easy. I, I, Roos. Yeah, it's, it's Roos Bolton. He is the better villain, I think. I agree with that. And um, it also... See, we don't know. Bolton keeps it quiet. We don't know if he's like flaying and torturing a lot of people. Um, he is. You know he is. <laughs> he is. He is. He, he, he has a skin suit. He's, There's no he's evidence. Doing the There's no Bill proof. Thing. Nah, probably. Yeah. Because <laughs> he mostly chides. He's not freaked out by Ramsey. He's like, why can't you keep it quiet? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I could see Roos Roos being pushed into a corner and having like a, a Dennis and it's always sunny freak out. Like I will put you in a box, a glass. Like, do you have skin luggage? No. Think of the smell. Like that is Roos. Yeah. Most people agree. Bolton is actually flaying people. He's just doing it quietly. And maybe that's the, the subtlety in the writing, right? It's like, well, you don't hear about Roos doing it, but you're supposed to know like, yeah, he's doing it quietly. That's what he says. Quiet lambs, you know, peaceful people. Anyway, yeah, so um, I wouldn't, I wasn't meaning to say that Walder Frey was sadistic where Roos is not. Um, I, I just, I mentioned it with the Red Wedding because he's literally cackling with glee. Like they orchestrate it with like cheesy drama with the, the music and the like. I mean, they really enjoyed the Red Wedding. Black Walder, and, and Walder kind of stands for all of those people. I didn't want to list all the different phrase, but he represents the worst. The red wedding phrase. Nevertheless, it is Roos. I'm late, but I just saw y'all pick Joff over Rorge. I am shocked. Yeah, that was a close one. We, I think that was mostly because of the scale of Joff being king and also projecting how his life would have gone if, even just a few years longer. But let's call this Roos Bolton is the winner. Clear winner, Roos Bolton. And there's Cersei's victory. Like I said, only going to get more difficult as we go. And here we come to... Oh, we swapped out Tyrion for Varys. Yes, so this is not Tyrion now. This is now Varys. Um, and Varys, I'm not going to write out all his crimes. We already talked about Varys. Basically, general inst he's causing serial waves of instability and turmoil and propping up Cersei and murdering Kevin in order to put Fagon on, which is a selfish motivation and not for the good of the realm. So he's a giant hypocrite who's destabilizing the realm and basically committing treason because he's supposed to be informing to his supervisors and be loyal to them. And instead he's running his own agenda. So he's pretty despicable. Um, Tywin Lannister, however. Tywin Lannister. Uh, Castamere's and Reigns. This was before he even became Lord of Casterly Rock. He was a teenager. He committed, I don't know if you want to call it genocide or familial side, like each house in Westeros is kind of like a culture. It's kind of, like, I don't know what you want to say. I just, yeah. use, I just say genocide, it's, but he did both of those houses. Um, then he did the Taisha thing, which is potentially the single most awful. It's hard to pick, but like the Taisha story is hard to read. It's hard to even talk about. Um, psychological torture, serial rape. Um, it's just, just awful to do that to his child and even to do like to, to Jamie he drug Jamie into it and made him complicit in it as well it's just as twisted as it could possibly be the sack of King's Landing Gregor and Amory Lorch work for Tywin he employs them still even after having this conversation with Amory Lorch he still employs him and sets him loose into the Riverlands and be like go burn and pillage and do your thing he knows what that is um, at the Red Fork he tries to get Tyrion killed. That's his own son. That's something we need to talk about more. He definitely tries to get Tyrion killed. Um, and then, yeah, the Tywin's dogs things, the Red Wedding thing. And then, oh, turns out he's actually sleeping with Shay uh, and maybe hiring her the whole time. Nettles, go first. Easy. Tyrion is worse <laughs> than Varys. Come on, guys. Tywin, yeah. Varys is... Oh, so, oh oops, Tywin. What? A, oh, my. Frodian slip. Tywin. Tywin is worse than Varys. Like... It's for me. It's a no-brainer, and it's because I feel like you could reason with Varys, whether and, and you can't really reason with Tywin. The way he thinks, that's what's going to happen. Nobody could have talked him out of the Red Wedding. Yeah, he's a psycho. He's a freaking psycho, and he's just one of the most. He's one of the biggest monsters in this whole story, both 
in the scale and the cruelty. Um, and then he covers it up with just layers of bullshit. So much bullshit. So much hypocrisy. Tim, tell, tell us. Yeah. Go ahead and run the poll, Maynard. Yeah, cause I'll go with Tywin too because even though Varys is also a hypocrite, we've, like we said when we were talking when he was back in the dishonorable mention before he got bumped up here, like it's not the good of the realm. It's not a good king. It's his good king that he wants, and that's why he's willing to kill good people good people like Kevin. It's why he's willing to work with uh, slavers like Illyrio um, to get what he wants. But at least, and but Tywin's more direct. Tywin has more push when it comes to doing this because Varys's, Varys's game is so Machiavellian. And while he's able to adapt, there's so many things that can slip up where it's Tywin. Tywin has more of the push and the drive to just get what he wants done. And he doesn't have to stay in the shadows and to move pieces around like Varys does. Tywin will just straight up do it. And it's like the difference between the one who will stab you in the back versus the one who will just come right at you and stab you in the front. And Tywin will just straight up murk you. Yeah, uh, real quick, Maynard Plum, uh, I think uh, we have a little finger beat Cersei. So I think maybe you put the scores in backwards there. You gave Cersei 67 and Littlefinger 33, when it in fact was the opposite, I believe. But he will straighten that out in a second. And this vote is in a landslide for Tywin, who is quite obviously a monster and a real contender to win this whole thing. As you can see, his list of crimes is staggering. Staggering. So Maynard, keep it the same. <laughs> <laughs> you hush. You hush, girl. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. That looks better. That looks better. All right. Um, let me go ahead and call this poll, too. This is clearly a Tywin victory. Oh, Tywin. We're going to do that Tywin stream. We are. We're just working up to it, just savoring the taste of it to come. Mad King Ares and Theon. This is this is going to be a landslide, but let's just talk about the crimes here. Theon is a little worse than you might imagine, despite being a victim of various things himself. Um, he betrayed House Stark. He was Rob's sworn man and then decided to go back to being Ironborn and then specifically went and attacked Winterfell when that wasn't even his command and, uh, and, and led to the downfall of the family that raised him. So that's pretty bad. Um, and then the Miller's sons are children that he murdered and passed off as Brandon Rob or Brandon Ricken. Um, he then after he got recified, he was complicit in the crucifixion of all those ironboard and Moat Kalen. He's a shell of a person at that point, but it's still, those are his kinsmen. Um, and then, yeah, he was taken hostage at nine and he was tortured by Ramsey. So those are mitigating factors. He also treats women very badly and is an arrogant, you know, Dick, uh, Mad King Aries, however, general misrule, torture, sadism, his wife, um, Rayella, you know, assaulted and, and raped and with the, the, the claw wounds and just horrific stuff. And he would do that on the days that he burned people. So he'd burn someone and get all randy and then go and assault his wife. That's, that's Mad King Aries. Uh, Rickard and Brandon, of course, cruelly tortured and burned, uh, how many others, you know, tortured, uh, burned the same way? He committed a genocide against House Darklin. Um, everyone except Dantos, if you remember. And even the, like, the branch, splinter branches, anybody related to Darklin's got killed. Um, then there was general corruption of the Kingsguard because he's having the Kingsguard protect him while he does all this horrible stuff that causes them to break their knightly oaths in order to keep their Kingsguard oaths. Jamie talks about that. Um, Ares is the one creating that dynamic. Um, and then, of course, the attempt, he try, would have killed thousands of people in King's Landing if Jamie didn't stop him. So go ahead and run the poll, Maynard, because this isn't going to be much of a contest. But Tim, go first. Your <laughs> thoughts on Theon or Ares as you please. It's, it's Ares. I mean, this is like with Tywin Lamp. When you are personally responsible for the extinction of an entire house, how, how does a guy who was, you know, how does how does Theon, who's crying for daddy's love, even hold a candle to that? Damn. <laughs> Not crying for daddy's love. Damn, Tim. <laughs> I agree with you, Tim. Yeah, sorry. This one was too easy. I love Theon too much. And I don't, when I think of Theon as, in the context of the villains list, I think of him mm -hmm. 
standing in Winterfell having just burned the boys. So what I'm saying is pre Ramsey, right? Because we're yeah. not going to think of Theon as Reek, you know, but yeah. and still, come on, it doesn't hold a candle. Yeah, yeah because Theon Magnum. is, because while Theon has done villainous things, it's obvious his story, just like the Hounds, when I was talking about the Hound and the Dishonorable Mentions, is a story of redemption. He does terrible things, but he needs to do those terrible things so that he can do his 180, see his growth, and come back and redeem himself and become a hero. Like that, that yeah. is going to be his character arc. Like, so yeah. Um, so it's, Theon, like at the moment, he is a villain in the beginning, he's a villain, and then but then when he becomes Reek, well, then he becomes Ramsay's pet. So it's like he kind of loses villain status at that point because now he is un because now he's under the thumb of an even worse villain. Yeah, I would never put the there's a difference for me between a person who does bad things. And a villain, like th those are two separate things for me. So I would never put Theon in the category of a villain; just a person who does bad things. Hmm. Let's see here, Rickard and Brand. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just even if for, for the Mad King Aries, even if all you had was Rickard and Brandon, that would be enough for me to still vote for. Because that, um, come on, the mind that thought of that to put you in the 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 fire yeah. the suit and the fire I declare and the fire as my champion yeah Come so on. Like, to me evil. if if Theon's not a villain then the word is not that useful um except for just separating intent I guess but like Theon killed children mm -hmm. he betrayed House Stark like these are villainous deeds these are bad things like <laughs> you know so I mean. The, the the Miller's children and potentially one of those was his children. There are it's definitely a theory that because uh, he slept with that yeah. woman, um, and that makes it ho ho more horrible. They weren't even random kids. They were. He's like, oh, I know two kids that are about the right size. They're the kids of the woman that I sleep with, who's married by the way. But like, so yeah. Um, but but nevertheless, it is of course Mad King Aries and landslide. So we will close the poll. And we will update the bracket and move on to our next couple of psychopaths, Mago and Grego. <laughs> almost the same, almost rhyme. So Mago is kind of representative of the worst Dothraki. He's the one that after, Dan after Drogo dies, he comes back to um, Arward and kill Aroa, specifically because Danny took her from Mago way back when. Um, and then Mago is with Calpono on the Dothraki Sea at the end of Danny's chapter. So she's going to face these two awful men again. So general murder and R-wording, uh, but probably also sadism. These are, unlike Drogo, these are like specifically enjoying uh, the, the worst parts of Dothraki culture. So Mago sort of represents all of those type of Dothraki. Gregor, on the other hand, <sighs> Prince Aegon uh, and really even worse than that was Elia. Um, this was a, the most brutal R word example you could possibly think of sadism and murder and violence. Um, and then of course the child murder of Prince Aegon, a sack of King's landing. He employs the tickler. Okay. The tickler there's works also, for Gregor. Go ahead. There's also it. the tavern owner's daughter. It's one of the mountains men tells that story. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. God, uh, run the poll. Run the poll. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, Gregor also, he, what he did to his brother, uh, uh, the hound, he pushed his face into the fire. Yeah. He probably killed his parents. <laughs> oh, he did, he did kill his parents. Sister. His sister, his sister. too? Yeah, he yes, killed they had Their a sister. sister disappeared. Disappeared. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. This might be the most one sided one yet, to be honest. Mago is horrible, but, but Gregor is just the, as twisted as it can be. But Mago is horrible, though, too, though. Come on. Like, that arrow thing is insane because we had Khal Drogo on here earlier, another Dothraki, but Khal Drogo, I don't think, would have gone out of his way to find arrow. No, right. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mago did that completely out of spite. Yeah. Because so. he's a villain. So, this, so we're coming here at 96 to 4 with 280 votes in already. 
I love how you guys are chomping at the bit to vote for these people. This is this is great enthusiasm. Love you guys. We're all in the swamp together here, and we're all we're all going to shower separately afterward, except for <laughs> some of you who may be roommates or whatever. But <laughs> we'll go ahead and call My this goodness. poll, and that's that. So that was. Uh, I think I may be behind on this one. Yeah, I have a couple behind. Sorry. So we got, yeah, Mad King Aries, Gregor. Excellent. Maynard, you're doing a knockout job. Let's everybody applaud for Maynard Plum behind the scenes, making all this happen so I don't have to be awkward. And, and I can only be awkward with my speech and not my windows. So Septon uh, and Chet. Lots of teas and lots of just really slimy disgusting stuff here septon ut is a serial child molester and he of course is a septon or masquerading as a septon so that as an extra layer of dishonor and blasphemy and hypocrisy and he's using it to make children feel safe and then he's abusing them and then of course he's also committing general murder as all the bloody mummers are now chet has this one particular story about bessa basically it's an incel story she was the town slut, but she wouldn't sleep with Chet. And Chet was mad about that, and so he killed her with a knife, which is a pretty horrible way to kill somebody, um, to be honest. It's not quick. Um, and then uh, he then lead, he's the kennel master where he, he's cruel to the dogs. He kicks them and starves them to make them mean. He plots to murder Sam. He's plotting the mutiny against Mormont, but specifically he wants to kill Sam because Sam took it helped uh sam took his job so he Mr. is vengeful and spiteful and just pathetic and malevolent and he's an incel and he led he was part of the mutineers so that's now treason and murder and and the night's watch is important he knows the whites exist and so and yet he's leading a mutiny of the night's watch and at this in this in this dire hour so th that's chet and septon uh, what do you what do you think nettles this one's tough. It's very close because it's like, I, I have a hierarchy in my mind of crimes. Like, I don't think all sins are equal. No, some mm -hmm. things are worse than others. And that first thing that's written for Septon Ut is, okay. But I'm, I would have to vote for Chet because only because we get into his mind um, in the books. Like we, we are reading place. it from it's his very point dark. of view. Yeah. And there's no redemption there. This is not a person that you can rehabilitate and, and show him a better way. Um, like this is a, per this is a person that's rotten to the core. I'm going to say that a lot. He's just rotten. Yeah. So, this is, yeah. it's hard to even talk about either one of these. Go ahead and run the poll. Tim, what do you have to say about these horrible, despicable people? Yeah. I'm going with it because again, the hierarchies, the diff. It's a whole extra the victims layer are children. Yeah. What it involved children. Bessa is, I mean, prob yeah. is probably a teen girl. Also should be noted, but yeah, serial child abusers. Just if you got one time travel arrow, you couldn't blame anybody for giving it to Septon. <laughs> you definitely could. Yeah. So, yeah, it just, and I think he's in here, of course. This is George acknowledging the Catholic Church scandal and just the whole tradition of figures like teachers and doctors and people that are supposed to be trustworthy and safe uh, and instead take advantage of that position. So this has got to be in the world. It's got to exist. And it deserves, you know, all of our all of our disgust that we have. So yeah. it's... 81 to 19 for for Septon Ut. This is a dark round. It's just, it's not as big <laughs> as some of the other ones, but it's dark. It's really dark. Yeah. The best of thing is bad because that's his view of women, the entitlement. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. It's the, it's the worst incel set of ideas. That you, yeah, entitled, I'm going to kill you because you didn't give me what I was entitled to. And yeah, it's... We should do the heroic characters next, Trey. Um, yeah, something. I was. I thought of a few, like best fighters. You know, funniest, best dialogue. We could talk about it, but um, people no, always ask is, me. Who, I, no, you go. People always, always ask you about who's who. You know, would so and so beat up so and so? And I was like, I never answer 
I was like, let's just do a friggin' tournament and and just who's the best fight? You know, let's do it. I don't know, but we'll have a mat. I, I like this. <laughs> I like this because I was just about to say the length of this list, the length of the honorable mention proves that George has written more villains than he has written heroes. So if you were to do this with heroes, it'd be three people. <laughs> it's like Brienne and Davos and Danny and John and like one or two other people. And like, yeah, that's it. And even Danny and John have committed crimes, but whatever. Uh, so uh, let's call this poll. It is 81 to 19. It is held steady there. And that is a victory for Septon Hutt. All right. All right. Okay. So here's a couple of interesting fellows. Victorian, as we've already talked about him, general reaving, R wording, and murder. Now, the murder of his wife to me is extra terrible, not less terrible because of the cultural context. He felt like he had to murder his wife because she was defiled because Euron R worded her. So this is just like very twisted. Um, I just don't have a lot to say other than that's just like. Wow, you know, like, <laughs> so, and then he's also, for, he's offering human sacrifices up for Dragonbinder. Um, there's like seven sex workers on a boat that he's burning and he's got three people to blow the horn, but it isn't really, it's mostly the, the wife murder and then the general violence. Now, Krasniz trains Unsullied. He trains them. He makes them. He does that. He makes money off of it. He relishes it. He sells them. He is responsible for all the puppy and baby murder, all the torture, all the mutilation, the mass enslavement, the mass dehumanization, and also leering at Danny. So this, to me, um, is potentially someone you could argue is the worst person in, in the world, uh, in my mind. But comments? Yeah, um, for the Victorian, like him murdering his wife, showcases that he never saw her as a human being. He just, like, all the years, I don't know how long they've been married, he never viewed her as, this is my partner, this is a person who's done this for me. He viewed her as something, a, a symbol and, or an object, and once it was defiled, well, you had to destroy the object. Yeah. But I would still vote that Krasnus is worse because... Of course. <laughs> I, 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 it's just worse. It's He's just made worse. thousands of unsullied. In yeah. order to become wealthy. Tim, do you have a bucket to barf in for us? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, with Victorian's killing of his salt wife, it's, it's, it, in his eyes, it's an honor killing because he sees it as it's more a point of his pride than her humanity. It's, it's the worst aspect of Ironborn culture. But when it comes to Krasnus, it's like these kids... He, he's trained generations. We, we got to think that he's probably trained on generations of Unsullied. And while Victorian, Victorian is is not, we know, we know that Victorian is is not the standard for all Ironborn because we also see guys like uh, Roger, uh, the Reader and stuff. But Krasnak does seem to set the mold for the wise masters. And and just the training of the Unsullied. You give them a puppy. You tell them they're supposed to bond with it, build a life with it, then murder it. And then when and then when that's the first thing in killing their emotions. And then later you give them a coin and tell them to go find a mother, kill the baby, give her the coin. But the coin is not to the mother. The coin is to the owner of the mother because the the baby was a slave and had it lived. It, even if the baby had lived, it would have grown up into a life of slavery. Like, and Victorian, I mean, Victorian, he sees a difference between, th like, he even, detect, like, while the Ironborn have thraldom, he finds a marker between that, whereas Krasnet is totally thriving on, on the slave trade and the whole structure of it. Yeah. I, like I said, I... I call Krasnus another dark horse contender for this whole... He's just... So, good job, chat. Good job, Maynard, throwing this in. You got the idea. Um, and yeah, when you, like... Slavery is just such a complex, multifaceted evil. Because it's... It's, it's like mental rape. It's dehumanization. It's, it's, it's usually the physical forms of those things as well. They're... All the family separation. Like, it's just... 
a whole rolling ball of atrocities as well. The forced labor is like almost the least of it. It's just yeah, like- Yeah, that's the easy part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because everybody's got to work anyway. Um, but, but sorry, I don't mean to minimize it. Damn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite the same, but but no, it's, it's I, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? The dehumanization and yeah. all the Compared other things. Compared to- yeah. So Krasnus is, it's it's hard to say anybody's worse than him. I don't know. We'll see if 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 he if there is somebody out there that's worse. But he wins this round, and we're moving on to we're almost uh, through the first uh, set here, and then we're it's going to go quick because there's going to be half as many matchups each round. So tickler and biter, like I said, it's a bad episode of Sesame Street. Um, the tickler is just extensive sadism and torture. The, the cruelest torture methods with the rat and the bucket and just all kinds of stuff. So um, that's the tickler. It's not a long list. It's just like repeat, 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 repeat. He enjoys it. Um, and then Biter is, of course, <clears throat> a monster of some kind. He's terrifying. He's huge and terrifying. It's hard to tell what his level of culpability is as far as like mentally what's going on with him. Roar just trained him since he was a child. He might be a squisher hybrid. So it's it's hard to tell what's going on with Biter, but he's obviously, you know, he eats people and stuff. So it, it's a monster, a villain, certainly. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the tickler is worse, right? Tim, Nettles, what do you think? Wait, hold on. Nicola Blackwood said that the Varys and Tywin bracket is messed up because Tywin won that one. Oh, yeah. Varys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Maynard will get that in a second. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Right, Appreciate cool. you staying on top of that. Nicola. Yes, Tywin did win that 94 to 6, not Varys, but we'll get that but quickly I remedied. I would say, yeah, the tickler is worse than the biter because I also feel like, like Rorge, the tickler could have made biter. Like the tickler seems like the type of person who will train you to be evil. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. biter, even if biter's not squisher, he's definitely feral. And the fact that Rorge has been training him since childhood is like, is a feral child who's never bit, who's never known right from wrong, like, responsible for their actions whereas the tickler yeah. is fully aware of what he is doing and even biter like biter does have one moment where it's when jockin says like this one doesn't have a name i call him biter and he seems to like it and biter <laughs> smiles so there even seems like a moment of humanity in by one small little gleaming moment of it where biter seems to like the name appreciate the name that Jockin has given him. Yeah, he's a grown-up feral child. That's what he is. Yeah. And possibly a squisher. Yeah, so I, he's definitely a squisher, actually. Watch my Deep Ones video. I read it with dramatic intent, and it's very clear. It's very clear. So how does the chat, how are we doing on this one? I can't see Cleo's tails in the way. A 93% for, for Tickle Me Tickler. Yep, he's just, he's just a torturer. That's all. He's very good at it. So, graduated the top of his class at Torture Academy in Shy. How many votes? I'm gonna call this one early. I just want to keep it moving, and uh, this is a clear. Yeah. This is a runaway here. Percentages don't seem to be moving. Why is anyone even voting for Biter? I don't want to get that. <laughs> I guess he's really Wait, scared. Wait, because he took out a chunk of Brienne's What do you guys face. think? What do you guys think about this? Um, Viking Raider says, "Cannibal hot take. Cannibalism isn't nearly as bad as murder." Do you guys agree with that? Well, but he's also he's murdering and cannibalizing. Well, technically, he's eating her before she's dead. So what's that? I mean, if if he hadn't been interrupted, she would have died. So, if it's just like survival cannibalism, that's obviously not the same as murder. I just watched a weird uh, documentary about uh, one of the earliest prison escapes in Tasmania, uh, which is, the whole history of Tasmania is horrific. Um, but the, uh, of course, the British had a, their very worst penal colony in the whole world in Tasmania, and people were escaping from that into the jungle, and then they ended up eating each other. And uh, yeah, lots of bad things. So in any case, moving right along. Um, Vargo oh. Hote versus Raph, the sweetling. So Vargo Hote leads the Bloody Mummers, so general R-wording murder and anarchy, but 
times 10 because he's the ringleader. He's making the most money off of it. Um, he is committing torture and mutilation and sadism. He loves to chop people's limbs off and torture people. I looked this up. So he's definitely, and then he also is practicing forced cannibalism with uh, one of the Manderleys. Um, so there's, that's Vargo Hote. Uh, however, Raph the Sweetling turns up in, he's a bloody mummer, but he turn, he's the one that turns up in Bravos in the Mercy chapter looking for an 11 year old girl. And the TV show did pretty much almost a straight version of the Mercy chapter. And of course, Arya poses as that girl and then murders him, um, which is awesome. Good job, Arya, although that's very sad also. But yes, that's Raph the Sweetling. So all of the general crime of the Bloody Mummers, plus he's specifically an active practicing pedophile and predator. So take it away, guys. Uh, your thoughts. Nettles first, I guess. This is hard. This is probably the hardest one. Like, I my initial thought is Vargo Hote is the worst because what you're not gonna do is have a lisp and take Jamie's hand. That's what you're not gonna do. <laughs> I didn't think the right the li, they, let's not lisp shame, but the Jamie's yeah, you take Jamie's hand. That's a good. That's the best yeah. sword fighting hand at Westeros. Damn it. Yeah, that, I'm tongue in cheek, you know. Yeah, but but then for Raphis, the Mercy chapter when you read that. Like that, that's the only bullet point you needed for, for Raph. So I don't even know what I'm going to vote yet. Tim, I need some time. Tim, what do you think? <laughs> <'Cause I don't... laughs> yeah, I'm going with Vargo. Um, Raph, let's see. Well, as they're saying, yeah, he's actually a mountains man, not a bloody mummer. Um, oh, right. Okay. Which yeah. doesn't yeah. really, doesn't really change things. It's just six of one, half to a dozen of the other. <laughs> Well, actually, he's a mountains man. Um, but <laughs> that's the thing. Like with the Mercy chapter, I feel like the Mercy chapter was written. Sometimes I get the impression that George wrote that before he scrapped the five-year gap idea. Because he did. He did. That's facts. Seemed, she comes off as older than she really is in that chapter. But George has stated that he has problems writing from children's perspective and. That's why a lot of our ki- that's why a lot of our kids seem more precocious and you know a lot old, it, lot older than what you expect from kids. I think it works really well as written because it shows that Arya is she's a mixture of innocence and stolen innocence. She understands how predators work and how men work because she's being taught psychology, deep psychology, the lying game and information collecting. So she understands what these men want and how they work but she's Mm -hmm. herself has not even really hit puberty and so it is it is incredibly tragic um but it is not inconsistent to me as far as like the training that she's receiving um and of course we know that he's on the name list so this is what Arya would do it's like if she spotted one of these bloody mummers like, oh, you came to me? You're in my theater? Oh, let me cook something up for you. Like, that's who she is at this point. So, um, Raph the Sweetling is winning 55 to 45. I think that's right. I think that's right. Look at how close. That, is this the closest this one we've had? It's one, one of them. It's, it's, yeah. it's among, yeah, there was another one about this close. I voted Vargo. I, I'm ashamed, but I voted Vargo. Yeah, I mean... It's both I mean, killable. Well, Vargo, I guess, because Vargo is a commander, so he is enabling, because he's the commander of the entire group, so he's enabling more. He's also a turn cloak. Raph I mean, killed granted, Lamy. He, tur- Blair, he turned Lamy his Green cloak hands. on Tywin to join Roos, so it's like he turned his he turned his back on True. one one butcher for another. Yeah. Yeah, Raph killed Lamy Greenhands, too, so there's that. Oh, there's a little good. move towards Vargo. 53-47. Oh, I ke- I'll keep it open. You guys are fighting. It's close. <laughs> yeah, voted Raph for Arya. I know. I'm ashamed. I shouldn't have even. Yeah, I'm ashamed. Can I change my vote? <laughs> ah. uh, no, you cannot. <laughs> I know. I can't. Unless it lets you. I don't know. Can you? It, it doesn't. Okay. Well, then no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vargo cuts people's feet off. It's pretty messed up. It's true. But if you think about scale, like. Think of what Jamie's hand could have done for the realm in a good way, fighting against the others. And he took that from us, guys. He Jamie's hand. I, forgot I need to... Jamie's hand. 
Oh, I forgot to mention among Drogo's crimes amongst, you know, that's selling people into slavery and all that Aquaman too. Let's be real. Like, um, I have not seen it, but I have heard that it is quite the abomination. So really, I liked it better than the original. Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. Oh, you're definitely okay. weird. Nettles. Come on. We're all weird. I'm here. very weird. <laughs> It's on HBO if you guys want to watch Aquaman 2. But. All right, I'm calling this one. I'm calling that one. That was probably longer than we needed, but sorry. Um, so let's, uh, let me just update this here. Okay, we are up to the ticker. That was Raph. We'll get, we'll get Raph in a second. And so Veramir and Euron. Um, Tim, go ahead with Euron's crimes, uh, and then we'll get to Veramir Sixkins, who's obviously a repugnant individual. Uh, but go ahead with Euron first. Where do we start? The list is so long. Uh, yeah, kinslaying, uh, R-wording his own brothers. Uh, sl- let's see, Baylor Black, yeah, killing his own people. Uh, Victorian's wife, the general enslavement, um, rebellion against the throne. Uh, bla- <laughs> All the blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. Never, you know. <laughs> Fully of flowers. You know Let's just get straight to Euron, okay? It's like, uh, we could just end it with a quote, all right? And for that sin, I kill them all. I spill their blood upon the sea, and sow their screaming women with my seed. Their little gods could not stop me, so plainly they are false gods. I am more devout than even you, Aaron. Perhaps it should be you who kneels to me for blessing. What yes. more do you need? The guy just turns the whole universe inside out. Um, so Veramir Six Skins, real quick. Uh, he commits serial R-wording with his Shadow Cat. He uses Shadow Cat uh, to force women from villages to come to his cave where he um, impregnates them in hopes to try to make a skin changer baby. So you got to carry Veramir's R-word baby to term. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's Veramir. He also, he kinslays his baby brother when he's very young. That's more questionable because he doesn't know what his skin changer power is doing, but it's still manifesting some level of malevolence. Um, Hagon is horrible. You want to talk about that? Go ahead. No, 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 no. no. I'm just agreeing. Yeah, no, the Hagon thing is incredible. Hagon took him in, raised him, taught him everything, and then when he dies, Varamir not only kills him, eats his heart, takes his wolf, prevents it from having a second life. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Maynard Plum. And then uh, he ate a wildling baby while in the wolf. And then worst of all, kind of, is body snatching Thistle, who was coming back to help him. And he tried to steal her body. So that's Veramir. Um, Euron is like Veramir writ large. If, if Veramir had more magic, he would be Euron. Like, these are almost the same person. It's just that Vermeer is the pathetic version of Euron. So I don't even know how you sort that out. I guess the chat knows. They didn't hear my speech about Vermeer, but yeah, I mean, obviously Euron, I guess. I Uh, voted Vermeer because I'm not taking um, scale into consideration with my voting. I'm trying to analyze who they are as a person. Vermeer, we're in his head once again. Like, like, he is pure evil. There's something very rotten inside of him. You mentioned him uh, kinslaying his brother. There's no excuses for that because your wolf or your whatever is going off of your pure emotion, like your soul. You know, yeah. these are soul types. You wanted that. You were jealous of your brother. And even as a child, this is, this is like Cersei pu- pushing Melantha into the fucking well. Like a child doing this shit. Like, uh, sorry, I'm cussing. But yeah, I mean, it's hard. This is this is one of the best square ups because- I should have maybe put they, Vermeer against somebody easier, but um, everybody's good, horrible. No. Everybody's horrible. And these there is a lot of parallels yeah. between the two characters, so. I mean, I think, I think Euron was gonna beat out anyone that he was put up against because while, while I can stand your, see your point with the Vermeer prologue chapter and we're seeing things, we're, we're seeing things from Varamir's point of view. We don't see things from Euron's point of view, but we do see things from two of Euron's abuse victims and their point of view of him. And that is why we get lines like, 
were you praying that I would pass you by or were you praying that I would choose you? And there's a whole level of malevolence to that. When yeah, it's malevolence is the A-ron, right word. A-ron, when Aaron is our POV and he is remembering those words being said to him when he was young. So there it is. You're that right. is a victory for Euron. Um, yeah. Somehow it feels wrong to see Veramir go down that quickly, uh, but I can't deny the evil of Euron, so. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and then our last first round matchup. Now look, look here. Listen to what I'm saying. Magor the Cruel, I did three streams on the guy to drive home the fact that, yes, he did lots of things wrong. There's no defending any of his genocide or torture or sadism or any of that with some crap about Tyena of the Tower or the Faith or any of that. This guy is a psychopath. And not only that, we had he agreed to a trial by combat with, with the Faith. He fought and won. They honored his victory and sat tight in the set for 30 days while he sat there in a coma. As soon as he woke up, he flew over and burned them all alive. It's one of the most dishonorable things a king has ever done in Westerosi history. It was not an act of war. Um, and Magor is one of the worst people who ever lived. However, John Connington is heading to King's Landing with Grayscale. And he knows that he's got it, and he knows that it's spreading, and he knows that he's going to spread it to other people, and he doesn't care because he wants to be the one to put Fagon on the throne. So the scale here is not to be overlooked for John Connington. Before you vote for Magor, which you probably will, go ahead, uh, Maynard. But John Connington is should not... Uh, just think about this, okay? I mean... He didn't just like refuse to cut off his hand and retire somewhere. Like he's traveling to Westeros, to King's Landing. Take it away, Tim. Thoughts? Yeah. So again, like going on scale, it goes to Magor. But John Connington, like you said, yeah, he's knowingly carrying grayscale. And the fact that he. John Cod is someone who took all of the wrong lessons from defeat when he puts when he starts to think like what would Tywin do? And it's probably what's going to lead him to using scorched earth tactics. I forgot, right. He's determined to be worse than Tywin. That is his now his new mission statement. What would Tywin do? It's on his wrist. Like <laughs> even without the gray scale. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. This is respectable. 30% is respectable for John Con. I'm proud of you, chat. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm and a I'm Magor as anti Magor as anybody gets. Defend Magor. Go ahead. I know you want to, Nettles. No, I'm not even. I, I yeah, that would be a long string. No. <laughs> Maybe a little. I, I love Magor. I would, you know, me with my dragon, I would marry him. I could fix him. I don't think I could fix John Con. That is so. That is so, girl nettles. <laughs> I don't think I could fix John Con. So that's no, why you I, couldn't. You couldn't fix like either one. Between, but the John, difference between someone like John Con and another POV like Theon is we know that Theon is on the road to redemption. John Con is on the road of how can I be worse? <laughs> so two <laughs> total different contrasts. <laughs> Learned, this is a guy that learned all the wrong lessons from Tywin Lannister. Exactly. So it is going to Magor the Cruel. Obviously, the Cruel is in his name. But John Connington is a piece of work. Yes, he is. A shout out to Quinn, the GM, who loves John Connington. As a, as a, he's, he's like the best character in John, fantasy. Quinn, the GM, the John Con and Victorian Jail. Yeah. Quinn, the GM, is a treasure. Uh, he, he really he's is great. great. I'm going to have him on as soon as I can. So, all right, let's end this poll. 300 votes. Magor wins, and that concludes the long first round. But, man, so now, okay, this should go faster because now we've, we've talked about all these crimes. Um, the voting yeah. will just be harder. That's what it's going to be. So, back up to the top, we now have Ramsey versus Joffrey. That actually isn't going to be that hard. That's going to be... Um, that's going to be a landslide. Like yeah. Go ahead and launch the poll, Maynard Keenan. Um, Maynard James Plum, Keenan Raven. The new poll is Ramsey and Joffrey. So I don't really need to pull up the list of crimes over and over, I guess. 
No. Let me find a piece of horrible artwork or something. Or maybe like a dungeon. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, definitely Ramsey. Just imagine it Ramsey with a crown. Come on. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um there we go. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Oh, some people are voting for Joffrey. Okay. When I voted, it was immediately 99 for Ramsey. 99%. Joffrey is only mitigated by the fact that someone killed him. Like, yeah. Because had Joffrey, had Joffrey lived longer, he could have reached Ramsey levels. He had the potential. Yeah. I don't think so. I think he would have reached Mad King level. Oh. Not Ramsey level. I mean, Ramsey flays people because the Boltons have a tradition of doing that. But Joff Joffrey is every bit as sadistic and malevolent, um, in my opinion. Okay, I, I can see that. Because Ramsey at 13 wouldn't have been Ramsey at whatever age he is now either. So, you know. Anyway, um, there you go. I got another percentage for Joffrey. But this is a clear win for Ramsey yeah. Bolton. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Chat has spoken. Ramsey is the winner. Next one is Amory Lorch and Craster. <laughs> Silence. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this is both. This is both child murder. Craster's. R wording all of his and marrying his daughters and he's sacrificing his sons to the others to the and others. as a me and as a and not only he's sacrificing them to the others he's also getting rid of them because he sees his own sons as as competition for his daughters right that's part of it yeah it's part of the implied thing yeah i agree the chat thinks craster's work worse i think amory lorch is here's my question do you think craster can be bought Amory can be bought. We know that. Can the Craster defense of Craster is that he is practicing a religion. It's a warped religion, but he's worshiping the others. He's getting tangible results from it. It is his belief that all the incest is necessary to make his sons to give to the others. That is the only mitigating thing you can say for Craster. Amory Lorch is just a monstrous psychopath. I would have to vote for Amory Lorch. I voted for Amory. 50 stab wounds, chat. Yeah. Chat, 50. I, Show me the 50. <laughs> we're we're to the point 50. where you can't blame anyone for voting for anyone, yeah. but I would vote Amory Lorch myself. It's because of the incest for Craster. It's too much. It's yeah. too much. This is the most incest we've ever seen, ever. So, uh, Summer Girl, Amory Lorch is the one who murdered Princess Rainey's, Rhaegar's daughter, and stabbed her like 50 times, and she was four, and he raped her too. So that's Amory Lorch. And then practicing more of the same in the Riverlands as Tywin's dogs and stuff like that. So, um, no, Craster killed all of his sons, Cat. All of the sons he leaves. I mean, that's leaving them out for Mark the others is the same as killing away. them. That's not any different. 90, was it 99? 99 sons. Oh, that was a show. That was a show detail. Okay. So. Okay, never mind. But, Forget it. But Craster is, yeah, I mean, they're both equally just, you can't, I don't know. I Ask me again in five minutes, I might pick Craster. I, I have to vote Amory Lorch, but yeah, um, it's, it's close. Clea, what are you doing, girl? Come here. Hey, come here. Cleo's been a handful. Cleo's going to the Bird Hotel soon. They're going to take a bird vacation. They're going to give me a couple weeks off. Yeah. Cat, Cat Shepherd said that turning over the babies to the others is not killing them. Basically, like, an independent. Well, I mean, it's, they're undergoing magical transformation. Uh, it's unknown know if any of the essence of the baby is existing. I mean, if it is, it's almost worse. If you think but about it, I think it. it's like the, the act. I think it's the act. Well, Craster's also, like I said, a pretty strong evidence he's killed Night's Watchmen too. So, yeah. Cleo, we got. <laughs> we have the. So you know, it looks like chat. Craster is going to win this. There was definitely some move towards Amory Lorch after my comments. However, it looks like Craster, Cleo, I got to do something with you, girl. Here, sit down. Oh. 
Cleo wants to vote. <laughs> Cleo <laughs> voted in the uh, All right. Well, I guess I go ahead and go ahead and call this. Looks like yeah, it's holding steady. So Craster wins. That was hard. <laughs> this is all very difficult. <laughs> um, so then we're gonna have Kyburn and Littlefinger. So Kyburn, the serial torturer and vivisector, and now necromancer, who's also propping up Cersei, versus Littlefinger, who started two wars because he's a little reject incel boy, and also is grooming Sansa and took down Ned Stark and tricked Lysa into murdering her husband and is probably going to murder Sweet Robin. So that's Kyburn and Littlefinger. Have at it. Uh, you're go ahead. You, you're just going to defend uh, Littlefinger some more because. We already heard that. I I voted. I voted Kyburn. That's all. Well, That's I don't blame you voting for Kyburn. He's a vivisector. Tim, your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I'm voting Littlefinger because uh, a little Littlefinger wants. I mean, it's also the embezzlement. He's he's uh, he want his uh, grain hoarding in the Vale. Like, oh. Did let's, Kyburn have something let's, to do with Jane Poole? Everybody. Okay, no, Littlefinger. No, it was... Let's think of the times we're Jane living Poole. in. How many corporations are pulling in record profits and saying that inflation is the reason, but we all know it's actually just pure greed? Littlefinger is the embodiment of that, just in a medieval time. What Dude, hold on, just real quick. Did Kyburn have anything to do with Jane Poole? I don't think so. That's all yes. Littlefinger. I thought she did. No. She disappeared. She, okay. Okay, if somebody maybe not. Will, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, it's Littlefinger oh. basically sent Jane to a brothel to tr train her. Um, yes. It's got to be Littlefinger. I can't yeah. believe I'm saying, yeah. I, I think Kyburn is really, no, it's not just implied. Come on, they tortured the blue bard right in the cell. And then he comes back up and later and was like, uh, they, gave, they gave her the, one of the Stokeworth girl. It was, yeah. It couldn't I'm stop crying after her things. daughter was, yeah. And then Kyburn used her up. Yeah. I'm confusing Stokeworth with Jane, but it was Stokeworth, not Jane. So Jane is a little finger thing. Stokeworth is a Kyburn crime. Both <laughs> bad crimes. But chat, you've already spoken. So I do think yeah, this is really correct little with Littlefinger yeah. winning here, but it's just shout out to Kyburn. Littlefinger will tank the economy. Littlefinger will foreclose on all our homes. He did. Yeah, he I, He did. He undermined Robert's rebellion or Robert's reign after not only did he start to <laughs> Jesus. Damn. Yeah, all the money that they owe to the Iron Bank, he's been cooking the books. Yeah. Here's does... my thing. There's a, there's a difference between the person that could order something like I order you to die and I can close my eyes, go to my room, do whatever. And then there's a difference between the person that could make the incision and make the cut. Littlefinger is the type of person who could order something to be done, but what evidence have we seen of him cutting people open or... Kyber oh, he likes to keep his fingers stomach. clean. He talks he about that. That doesn't change it to me. Well, he pushed Lysa out the moon door, so he did that himself, which... Yeah. yeah. Hey, that was hey, cool. At least... At least at least the organs that Kyburn's cutting out of me, I can sell on the black market. Littlefinger's just going to take my black market money, and I have a bigger problem with that one. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the fun thing about this stream, is debating the level of causality and culpability and all that. But uh, So there we go. Uh, moving on, it's Roos and Tywin now. So for me, this is Tywin. I just, I'm fixated on Tywin being horrible. But Roos Bolton, I mean, they, they pulled off the Red Wedding together. Um, I don't think there's anything that Tywin has done that Roos wouldn't do. Um, but I just think Tywin has accomplished more, <laughs> if you will. Wow. But I voted Roos. Did you? Yeah. Because Roos embodies the term villain. They, even his eyes. His eyes aren't blue. His eyes are great. Have you ever met someone with gray eyes where it's like the gray? It's so unsettling. You're trying to talk you to them. You can't trust him, gray-eyed. Like, my efforts. And then the way he talks, like his whole demeanor, his whole swag is the, and like I said, back to my criteria, can I talk my way? I think I could talk my way out of Tywin shit. I cannot talk my way out of a paper bag with Roos. The, just the story, I feel like the story of 
Ramsey's mother is meant to tell us what kind of thing, how he rules. We should assume stuff like that has happened many times. He just keeps it quiet. So he's a malevolent psychopath, and so is Tywin Lannister. <laughs> I don't know yeah, to, to your point, Tywin has scale. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like they're both horrible monsters, but Tywin has receipts. I mean, the fact that you can just send... Uh, someone with a loot in and they start playing the reigns of Castamere and you immediately get what you want. That holds level. Even though Roos is a quiet, you know, a quiet town, a quiet people also just has such, such horrible malevolence to it. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. continuing to employ Gregor and Amory Lorch after the sack of King's Landing and then turning them loose on the Riverlands when there wasn't even a war going on, he did that because of the whole, just the way things were going in King's Landing with Ned and Jamie and Tyrion and all that stuff. Like, Just as Cat took Tyrion. Yeah. His right. least favorite son. His least favorite son. So I think this is correctly decided, but we get it. It's Roose Bolton. Sorry, Roose Bolton. Damn. Sorry, Roose Bolton. This is surprising. I thought Roose would have lasted longer, but... Thing is, Roos works like for Tywin. It. At the end of the day, Roos works for Tywin against the worst, the worst possible opponent. <laughs> Roos uh, works for Tywin. I think that's it, Mike. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's this, yeah. So, Mad King Ares and Gregor. I thought I was going Mad King Ares going into this. Now I'm hesitating though. Gregor is. It's Gregor. It's Gregor. Ellie of Dorne, man. Ellie of Dorne. It's That's Gregor what? because don't don't forget Mad King Aerys was described as wasn't he like very nice when he was younger? Charismatic? Uh, no, he was comely and well liked, but there were signs right from the beginning. Um just don't forget Rayella. You know, we know about Brandon and Rickard, but there would have been other people. He, you know, he burned people and then he went to our word his wife, and he was king as well. So Gregor, like, he's, at the end of the day, he is the lord of a minor house who basically is like a hired gun. Ares is king, so that is different. But Gregor is, they're, I mean, they both in, they're both sadists, guys. They're both, they're they both enjoy it. Mad King Ares didn't kill his sister, his mom, and his dad. Stop it. So sorry, sorry. That's true. He just sorry. wanted to kill everyone at King's Landing because he lost his battle. Yeah. yeah. There is the whole thing of, yeah, Ares maybe was having dragon dreams. I don't think that lets him off the hook. Lots of people had mm -hmm. dragon dreams. Most people did yeah. not do what Ares did. But, Stop it. <laughs> yeah. But Gregor is so hateable. He really is disgusting. Um <laughs> Good job, chat. Yeah. <laughs> this was this is an upset. I I think Ares was a higher seed than Gregor for sure. He definitely was. So this is yeah. this is you guys overruling what me and Maynard put in the rankings. But uh, <laughs> it's I get it. I get it. That's how it. Hey, yeah. the, welcome to the fandom. <laughs> Seventy-one twenty-nine. That's holding steady. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that. Gregor wins. Gregor yeah. wins. I, mean, I would have given it to the Mad King for scale and reach, but I guess, I mean, the story starts with him already dead, whereas Gregor, it seems more personal because we're seeing what he's doing in real time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the da the chat yeah, has spoken, be so not going to go over yeah. the crime some more. That's Gre Gregor's, Gregor's the, the upset victory over Mad King Ares. So we're now Septon Ut and Krasnus Monak laws. Damn. I've already said my piece here. Go ahead. Go ahead, so Maynard. In, and go ahead, Nettles. You know, child stuff versus slavery. This is tough, guys. Um, I would go Krasnus. It has to be Krasnus, in my opinion. But Ut, I mean, ooh. Yeah, the it's just the scale. I mean, thousands of unsullied. Thousands. That's all I can yeah. say. Because with Krasnus, it's systemic. Systemic. That's a good word. 
Yeah, because okay, all these like... unsullied are children when they're taken. So. Yeah, and he is he's killing their emotions. He's turning them into, you know, just fighting machines. And then yep. at the end of it all, they go and kill some other baby, just a random baby, you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. someone's holding one day at the market. So. Yep. Um, Jesus. Yep. Yeah. I mean, when we think of like, if we were ever talk about like when they say like, well, you know, there's fates worse than death, like Septon Utz killing the kids when he's done. Krasnus, what he is doing is he is hollowing children out and ruining them for life. They have to live with that. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Um, I don't know that there's anyone I could vote for over Krasnus, but we will see because you just you can't tell until you're put to the test in the moment with the vote. But yeah, it's most evil, most villainous, who you hate the most, however you want to express that or think about it. But yes, that's that's the idea. So Krasnus is the winner. Danny Someone burning his... Chat. Danny and Drogon burning this... Uns it's my favorite moment in the story. It's nothing better. Yeah. That's all I could say. Okay, so... Someone in the chat said that the R word is like already built into the Krasnus model. So yeah, I mean... There's no need to parse at that point. It's all it's all yeah. the worst things. Yeah. So the tickler oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, you're done. Okay. The tickler and Raph the Sweetling is the new matchup. Um these are kind of similar people, you know. Um they both enjoy mayhem and violence. The tickler maybe yeah. creeps you out a little more, but no, Raph is is the child predator over at Bravos, though. That's right, that Arya killed, so these are kind of like two characters where you could swap one out for the other and it wouldn't make a difference at all. <laughs> did did Arya kill them both? Who killed um, the Tickler? I think Arya did Tyler... kill the Tickler. I right? Thought, wasn't the Tickler, the Tickler was one of the na three names she gave to Jockin. Well, she's still killing them. I she didn't say his was name. He, was Jockin's he with the, the mountain? The deed, but it was at Arya's command. I can't remember whether he was part of the soup or whether no the dogs. No, it's when the it's dogs. when the hound and Arya kill people at that inn. Is I think that's where the tickler is. In the show, but in the books, isn't it the dogs? Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jaqen gives the dogs the that poison. The basilisk the venom. Basilisk venom. Yeah. No. Basilisk venom and makes the dog go Basilisk mad. Venom. Okay, so the chat is saying that in the books it is what I was saying. Yeah, the hound. She kills the tickler at the inn with the hound. The dog is wheeze. So who gets the basilisk venom? Who gets That's the basilisk wheeze. venom? That's wheeze. Wheeze with the dog at Heron Hall. I love you, chat. And wheeze is bad. Um, you know, he could have been on here somewhere, I guess, but he just first round fodder, really. So. Yeah, it's fine. Raph the Sweetling, yeah, I think. Let's assume that some of the people the Tickler might be torturing are children, right? See, like Arya almost got fed to the Tickler. So it's, even though it's like, okay, Raph the Sweetling, he's a child predator, obviously, but the Tickler's torturing all kinds of people, so. Was um, he, do I know in the show, he was, in the show he was doing the whole thing with like the rat and the iron bucket and the flame. Is that what he was doing in the book where the rat has that was to shoot tickler. through you to escape? That was Tickler. That's Tickler, yeah. Yeah, but okay, was that what he did in the book or was that, or was that in the show only? Um, I know for sure show. I think um, it's a slightly, there's a modification. The show put the mask on the face, right? Or the, the show put the thing on the chest. In the book, it's the a rat face in mask. The bucket, the bucket on the chest, and then they start. Then they held heat to the bucket. In the, the book, it's a face chew, mask. The rat would have to chew through the. You know, it's gonna hollow through the flesh before it can hollow through the. Bucket. Let's let's move on. I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> that's the tickler, though, guys. So you're voting for Raft the Sweetling instead of him. I don't know. <laughs> I voted tickler. I don't even know who I'd vote for. Not to be a cop out. Who I guess the tickler, but fuck man. Only because in Mercy, Arya was able to defeat Raph very easily. Like, he seems someone like, you just got to show a little titty, and you got him. And then, and then cut an artery. Yeah, again, yeah. we're at the point where there's no wrong votes here. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. That's why I'm going off of stupid stuff. I'm like, okay, who could I fucking, you know, outlast? Is there gold hidden in the village? Yeah, it's cool that Arya has killed them both, I guess. That is, in, <laughs> that's the only thing I have to say about this round, is that Arya killed them both. They are both dead. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God for Arya. Yeah. Um, okay, well, um, I'm, I think I'm holding this poll open, but it looks like Raph the Sweetling is moving on in order to lose to Euron <laughs> in the next round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who so cares? We'll go ahead and end this. Good job, chat. That was close. By the way, I do have palette cleanser material coming this week. I've got a, the edited Daenerys Targaryen Iceberg will be out uh, Tuesday. I cut a whole hour out of that thing, so it's much snappier now. Went from five hours to three and forty-five. So, um, and then I think you, you should release. I think you should release those other two hours some other time. Just oh like, no, it's just all like bloopers. It's just a no. There's nothing good in there. Um, but uh, uh, then the other thing is we're gonna do um, House of the Dragon on Wednesday. Uh, uh, Tim, you're not free during the week. Nettles, if you are free, you can join me. If not, I'll grab somebody else. But yeah, this Wednesday, I want to do episode six rewatch stream. So let me know if yeah. I check your schedule, okay. your very busy schedule. Let me know. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, this Wednesday, guys, at the normal time, three Pacific, we will do episode six, House of the Dragon rewatch. And uh, the Danny Iceberg edited with more art is coming on Tuesday. So yeah, palette cleansers are plenty, but let's soldier on. The tickler has won. And our last first round is Euron versus John Connington. Um, oh, no. This would be Euron and Magor. Sorry. This is Maynard Plum. You need to switch these ones. I got excited for a minute. I was like, wait, is John Connington still around? No. Magor beat John Con. So it's Magor <laughs> and Euron. <laughs> Lots of luck. Tim, yeah, what's your call on that? Oh, let's see. Oh, just, yeah, you can take yeah. a minute and just groan. Magor's I mean, innocent. No, he's not. <laughs> Magor's no, he's not. Not in any sense. Because I mean, <laughs> Magor got to the level that Euron wants to be at. Yeah, it's like, Magor and Euron, guys. We'll fix the bracket in a second. It's Magor versus Euron. Go ahead. Yeah. But Euron also wants to take it a step further because he literally wants to be a god. He's more ambitious. Yeah. I know, Magor is king. Magor was king, and he didn't do any of the stuff that Euron is doing. Put your thinking caps on, chat. And then okay, Ma uh, you Maynard saw... Plum, whenever you get that, uh, you can feel free to launch the poll, too. And, uh... But, yeah, really, let's think about this. Like, how would you draw a distinction between these crimes? I mean, they both are of a similar scale. They're both incredibly cruel. Euron but hasn't Euron genocided has... anybody yet. Magor has. Magor did. But Euron's story isn't written. And he certainly yeah. would. Doesn't yeah, Euron have a woman? Trying. Euron has a woman who's pregnant with his child that he's using for sacrifice. Would Magor do that? No. No, because Magor legitimately did want an heir. Well, he did want he... an heir, but he murdered and tortured several of his wives. So... At least Magor wanted to preserve something, which is the Targaryen dynasty. What does Euron want to preserve? Oh, yeah, his Euron own dynasty. Compared. It's no different or more virtuous than Magor. How is he preserving his dynasty children. by putting his child and his mo the mother because of his child those on the are, of his No, those are bastards not worthy of the contents of his chamber pot. He wants to have a real heir worthy of him with Daenerys Targaryen and then murder her too. That's his whole thing. He does want to murder yeah, Daenerys. Magor got to the Magor probably was pushed to the point where he would have been happy just for a bastard to survive the way he was losing kids left and right. I'm surprised this is so one-sided, uh, but... The chat is smart. The chat knows what's up. If, look, if gang. we need to do a fourth Magor stream, we will. Don't push me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dragon Gang... <laughs> wow, you're on the comfortable victory. Sound of because... the sound of the silence. They pray. Oh yes, they pray. I think because Euron is the closest we're gonna get to like true Bloodstone Emperor. 
Magor came close, but Euron's really working for it. And Avery again, Jackson. Magor kill he genocided House Haraway, all of them, even the branch houses, because he wrongly believed that his Haraway wife was intentionally having lizard babies. Like nobody did anything wrong at all. And he just he wiped an entire house off the map. So please don't come at me with Magor didn't do anything wrong because you're thinking about his war with the faith. Like it's one thing to talk about the war with the faith. He did lots of things wrong. Just no, don't say yeah. we don't know. We do know. I'm you're gonna make me do a fourth stream. <laughs> <laughs> we do know that's a matter of record. The Maesters didn't invent that he wiped Hairway off the map. That's yeah. not how the Maester bias works. I'm... Yeah. Anyway, you're on. I audience. can agree with you on that. Although... Avery Jack said Magor died in a chair, so that's why they don't respect him. <laughs> fourth Magor's fourth stream. It's coming. Not for lack of trying, though, but Euron would have House Botley exterminate. He killed Sawade. And Tristopher Botley is on his, you know, to-do list. And uh, he gives Euron, the lands to House Blanche. Listen, Euron would wipe houses off the map as soon as he would butter his pancakes, okay? Like, there's <laughs> we, there's no... <laughs> Maybe the Haraways were punks. Yeah, okay. Please don't. I'm not. I'm just not going to read the, the chat right now because I will start banning people. I really will. End poll. No, don't. I, dude. Well, I'll be right back. Truth and Justice Committee. I mean, Haraway was, they were lords of Harrenhal, right? Uh, uh, what was House Haraway? Maybe. I, he even went to Haraway's town and killed all the Haraways there. Like, it was just over the top. You know. So, okay. So, Euron has defeated Magor. All right. So, we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our remaining eight villains are Ramsey Bolton, Craster, Littlefinger, Tywin, Gregor, Krasnys, Raf the Sweetling, and Euron. That's that's where we're at. <laughs> you can't spell Megor without OG. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so first matchup. Oh, this, I guess they wait for, okay, here's no. So first matchup here, Ramsey Bolton versus Craster. I, easy. It's easy? Yeah. Ramsey, right? Ramsey. Okay. Tim? Um, is this is where Craster, Craster's run is over? Yeah, I mean, well, Daughter marriage, son sacrifice, but then Ramsey flaying, and it's also implied that he's forcing Jane Poole into bestiality. So it's like, come on, this is like the choice between cleaning up vomit or feces with your bare hands right here. I'll take the feces. <laughs> I'll take a different analogy. I've walked a dog and picked up feces before. It's fine. Vomit, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to pick up. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so I guess I'll go with Ramsey because Ramsey's still alive. <laughs> I I think it's Ramsey. Excuse me. It's I think the it's Ramsey. crimes, Tim. Tim, it's not just the alive; it's the crimes. Ram Ramsey is. Fueling the others, though, right. And they're the real threat in Westeros. So that is an existential terror that does add something. I'll take the feces. Nettles 24. Put it on Twitter, Martin Crow. <laughs> Quotable. Quotable Nettles. All right. Well, this looks like a Ramsey Bolton victory. Surprise, surprise. Ramsey wins. Beats Craster. So now, oh, my God. How did this happen? This should be the final round. Littlefinger and Tywin. Oh, but there's all these other people that are horrible too. Okay. Um, <laughs> Littlefinger and Tywin. I honestly don't know. Um, Easy. I think it's Tywin. Yeah. But 
He started two wars, man. He started two wars. Cleo, come here, my darling. Come Reigns here. of Castamere. Show me another character yeah, it's who has in. the equivalent it's... of the Reigns of Castamere. Show me. I, I think it's got to be Tywin. The guy is just... He's just a ball of condensed hatred. Like, mm -hmm. I honestly don't think he enjoys anything. Do you think Cersei is Tywin with teats? No, no. She's a lot more comparable to Ares or somebody that's very unstable, in my opinion. Like, we just did uh, Cersei's first chapter. We did a chapter reread. And, like, she, it's just a nice mix. There are some thoughts that are very rational and strategic and some thoughts that are absolutely crazy and paranoid. And it's all mixed up. It's very well written. Um, but, no, I... I, 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 no, I don't think she's really that much like Tywin. The only reason I ask is because you said ball of hate, which applies to both. See, sir, yeah, there is definitely a, they have something in common with being mocked and and fear and overcompensating and stuff. Yes, there are there are some through lines for sure. Littlefinger is such a nasty piece of work. Um, yeah. Well, I'm Tim gonna go with Tywin. Tywin's been what? Tywin's been setting the world on fire since before Littlefinger was even born. He's been climbing the chaos ladder for years. Yeah, well, there's definitely some surprises here um, in some of these votes. It, but it's just, yeah, it's you just go back and forth. You're like, but how could I vote against him? But how could I vote against him? But these crimes are so bad. But these crimes are so bad. It looks like Tywin More is a winner. Morse Code Food said, wow, I didn't think Littlefinger would get knocked out. No. Yeah. Adam Keller, again, two wars. Yeah. Destabilize the realm in between. The whole Sansa thing. The, the little, the Lysa thing, the John Aaron thing. Like, coming up with I the mean, scheme to send the Starks that letter. They killed John Aaron, blamed the Lannisters, and then told the Starks to blame the Lannisters. Like, that's... He just created that out of nowhere. This is why I love Littlefinger. His hands are not dirty. That's the thing. He did oh, all this. Oh, he's a great villain. Not... He is a fantastic <laughs> villain. He really he's... is. He's such a great villain. Gotta but... keep your hands clean. But he has lost. He has lost to Tywin. Tywin's hands are dirty. Like Reigns of Castamere. I'm sorry. Your hands are dirty. Littlefinger, his hands are I think they're equal. I really do. Even Tywin turned the garden fingers. hose on. He did. He was like, okay, is it sealed? All right. And then he turned the hose on. I agree with that. Um, so, so Tywin has won. And our next round, Dear Help Us God, is... Oh my God. We have our first Final Four entrant. No, two Final Four entrants. Ramsey and... <laughs> okay, Gregor my and Krasnis. Gregor and Krasnis. So this is... Gregor is as evil as you can be, and his scale is reasonably large. Krasna's scale is possibly the biggest in the whole contest. Mm. I mean, Littlefinger's scale is really big too, but to me, Krasna's like represents like Slaver's Bay as an industry. So I just I can't exactly. vote against Krasna's. I voted Gregor. That's why I was like, Only oh, you isn't a name. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Him. I was saying, like, Kravis is a name you wouldn't think would make it this far, because he's one of those where you're like, who was that again? But then when you realize, but no, but when you hold him as a symbol for Slaver's Bay as a whole, then it's like he has so much more oomph to it. I like the way Baboof has said, systemic is more evil than wild evil. I kind of agree with that. I think that's where I'm coming from. I don't know. I voted Gregor because Krasnus must have had an example before him. The, like, you guys are saying systemic evil. There's a system that makes Krasnus think that this is the way to be and it's okay. When you look at Gregor, well, Gregor had a mom and a dad. He had a two-parent household that was showing him a nice, a good way. And something inside of him was so rotten, he still went against that. It's so rotten. It's chilling. Gregor is chilling. Um, that's why I voted Gregor, but it, I, I wasn't. He's like he's like a crime. horror movie murderer, you know, like yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm not voting in this one since the crimes to me are equal. I'm not voting based on crimes versus versus who they are. 
But the, the, the process of making the Unsullied is like specifically cruel, you know? I mean, it's it goes out of its way to be cruel and... Just yes, but if you take out, take out Krasnus, someone takes his place easily, right? Because there, there's going to be another... Well, any of those people another. are worse than Gregor, in my opinion. Yeah, that's but what But if I'm you saying. take out Gregor, there's not anybody to take his place. Oh, no, there's Amory Lorch. There's a bunch... There's Bloody Mummers. There's other people like that. Absolutely. Of course um, there are. I'm, I'm going gonna, with Krasnus... I'm going with Krasnus because of puppy murder. At least, at least the Cleganes love dogs so much they made it their sigil. <laughs> That's <laughs> you got to find something to grab onto here. This is just we're waiting in filth. Um, this but has Gregor... gotten closer over the course of the voting, but it looks like this is a Krasnus victory. Wait, JT said a black woman not losing her shit because of slavery is surprising. Honestly. This is fictional. If we're talking about real life, that's different. That's a different story. This is fictional. And Gregor, yeah. Gregor. <laughs> I just had, I had to say I mean, that. This also, I mean, we also we also know like the the slavery system in George's world isn't race based. It just seems that way on the show because they're filming in Morocco. Right. Thank you, know? you Tim. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, there's no wrong votes here. <laughs> so I would go Krasniz, but I understand the Gregor votes. Let's go ahead and call this for Krasniz Monek laws. And he leered at Danny, too. So He leered at Danny, too. He did. He did. How dare I like he that. get your filthy eyes off of our queen? <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, tell her I'll knock some off the price because I like her ass. That was the, that was the line in the show. Disgusting. All right, Raph the Sweetling, and you're on. This is just a butchery. This is an offering. We are offering up Wrath the Sweetling to Euron in sacrifice. That's what I believe we're doing. Go ahead, Maynard, and cue the poll. Is there any argument for Wrath the Sweetling over Euron? I mean, Euron no, R-worded just... his own brothers when they were children, so he's doing the same thing that Wrath is doing in Bravos, only to his family. Um, and then there's all the rest of the stuff that Euron does. So When I voted, it was 100% Euron. <laughs> This would have been chat's perfect moment to just troll us and vote for Raph. <laughs> but no, the crack the Kraken needs to eat. We only have the Kraken must eat, yes. Uh, pity votes for Raph the sweet. Let's, why would there be pity votes? Cleo, stop it. it. <laughs> Cut it out. Do you want to come step up? Oh, you want pets? All right. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a quick one. This is a quick one, indeed. And this is how it would go if they fought, too, probably. We've never seen Euron right? fight in combat, actually. Maybe he's like a wimp. I think he's probably no. a good fighter. Yeah. He, come on. What, you could say whatever you want about the iron board, but they do follow strength, like the okay. Dothraki. So let's end this poll. This is, we don't need to see any more. Euron is one. So this is a, this is a real final four here. It's going to be Euron in a second. So Euron, Krasnus, Tywin, and Ramsey. Let's just take a stretch here. We're almost done. Savor the moment. This is the final four. We're all going to Indianapolis or someplace like that for the final four. It's pomp and circumstance. First game's on Thursday. Second game's on th Sunday. You know how this goes. Wait, so I don't follow sports, but in basketball world, are we at the point where it's down to four teams? Yet? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, final four. So Sorry, can you assign these four to the teams, the, the final four teams, or no? Is there no comparison? <laughs> oh, I don't know who's actually – I don't think that the basketball tournament's that far. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We're going to need a commercial for ladders and Doritos before we get back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be more for the it'd be that uh, better health uh, home therapy service or something. That's, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Uh, uh, so I'll run down to the crime. Yeah, let's go ahead and restate the crimes. Yeah. So Ramsey and Tywin is our Ooh. next matchup. Don't don't put the poll yet. Let's talk about this for a second. So Maynard Plum, hold your poll fingers. Excellent stuff. Thank you, thank you. So Ramsey, he is obviously relishes torture. Um, he has tortured and killed multiple women. And he names all of his dogs after the victims. He um, 
is probably planning. T- I mean, we, he killed Domeric, so that's usurpation. It, probably only a matter of time before he tries to kill Roos and take over his house. Um, then there's the Jane Poole thing. Jane Poole is masquerading as Arya. She's like 15 or 14 at most. And Ramsay delights in torturing and abusing her on a daily basis, bringing Theon into it as well. Um, so that is, that's Ramsay. Um, then we just have Tywin. We talked about Tywin, multiple genocides, the Taisha thing. Um, so abuse of his children, uh, just rampant hypocrisy. Uh, yeah. Um, God, Tywin Lannister. Tywin survived the Mad King. That says something about his ruthlessness. And then Tywin employed Amory Lorch and Gregor. And Gregor just went down to Krasnus barely. Like, he is but one arrow in the quiver of Tywin Lannister. So that's Tywin. Tywin and Ramsay. Tim, you want to give a final word on these two before we give the poll to the chat? Uh, yeah, because... I mean, Tywin... Like, Ram- Ramsay's chaotic. But Tywin is organized. And it's like... I go with Tywin because Ramsey know I mean Ramsey knows what he is about. But Ramsey, again, going based on scale, he doesn't have the push or the pull. Because even his even his little gang of like suck ups aren't even his. The bastards boys are actually working for Roos. Whereas Tywin has Gregor and the Mountains Man and all of these all of his mad dogs. So I agree with that. I'm I think that it would only be a matter of time before someone takes down Ramsey at his rate, you know, going the way he's going. Yeah, Ramsey's got a. Ramsey doesn't have the. He doesn't have the sense of Tywin does to go to go that far. Ramsey's got to crash and burn, so that's why I'm. And he'll fizzle out. He's that's being why protected by Roos, to be honest, right now. It may have already happened. So go ahead, mm-hmm. Maynard Plum, and launch the poll: Ramsey versus Tywin. And I'm we'll let the chat Ramsey. decide. Are you guys crazy? Ramsey is worse than Tywin. Are you are you guys crazy? What? Uh, well, no. I mean, just sell me on it. For what reason? Okay, we. I would have to take scale out because if you're talking about scale, then yes. Tywin. Why would you take scale out though? That's a fact. Because I'm. Because when I look at the word villain, I don't see the word scale. I see the soul, the human. Like, are you worth being saved? Yeah, and are Tywin is not me? a better soul than Ramsay. It's this they're different I think, I think different Ramsey's levels of worse. terrible. There's nothing redeeming because about Tywin, not one thing. Tywin smiled with Joanna. Y'all forgetting Joanna. Oh god. Tywin like Tywin has humanity. Show me an example of Ramsay smiling. Oh, he smiles all the time. Not when he's torturing people, but I'm saying show me like the way Tywin smiled on his wedding day. Do you think Ramsey would ever smile at anything akin to that? I don't That's I it. don't think that matters at all. He cracked a smile at his wife a couple times, who was his cousin, by the way. A I don't think that times, counts for anything. He warned her he never remarried. Why did Tywin never remarry? Because he's got weird ideas about perfection and honor and Not weird stuff like power. that. Because he, has secret, he, has Not even, he didn't marry for power. power. He doesn't need to get married. Yeah, he has you secret brothel tunnels. Thank you, Tim. You can go to the brothels, and be, has, you can that, go to the brothels and be married. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Maynard, oh, oh, for- we have, what do we have? Oh, this is close. Look at this. Oh, so close. Chat, I just figure it out. Chat. I like the way yeah. that you put this, Tim. Uh, is that Ramsey is more of a loose cannon that is destined to burn out soon. Tywin is so organized and effective. He's been doing this shit for like decades. Yeah, you so. gotta get organized. Ramsey doesn't have organized. Hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. You said Tywin doesn't arbor and skin people alive. He absolutely does. Um, the Taisha thing, just because he does not put his own member inside of her, he has a hundred soldiers do it. So that was bad. That was bad. It's one of the worst things in the story. And Tywin does that. He does it in order to abuse Tyrion. Tyrion fell in love. Tyrion was in, listen, listen how cruel this was. Tyrion has, has so much self-esteem issues. He actually fell in love, 
found some someone that accepted him. And what did Tywin do? He scooped in and said, we got to teach him a lesson that love is worthless and that you should never trust women and they're all whores. And so we're going to turn her into one. Uh, it's, it is the psychological malevolence of that act. Like, don't tell me about smiling at Joanna, please. Like, I have a question for both of you. If Tywin is so bad, why didn't he kill Tyrion? He tried to at the Red Fork, but he's a Lannister, so he can't As a just... baby when he was defenseless. Because he was Randy his son. He Tyrion said that. Him? He's like, I would have, yeah. but I but I don't know that you're There's not my no son, so I can't. It's because of Ramsey the have killed Tyrion. The Kinslayer. Tim, go ahead. I said, because no one's more cursed than the Kinslayer. But even though he didn't kill Tyrion, Tywin has killed Chun. He drowned all of the Tarbecks and Reigns. Every single one. No, no, no. One, I'm talking about Tyrion. Do you think Ramsey would have killed every Tyrion? Ch- every every Tarbeck and Rain child drowned under Tywin's orders. I don't care. That's not his blood. If Ramsey was in the place of Tywin, would Ramsey have killed That's a Tyrion? hypothetical. Fuck we don't yes. need to talk about you hypotheticals. You know he would have. Hey. It's hypothetical based on the text. You guys know who Ramsey is. But no, we're weighing the crimes. We're weighing the Ramsey crimes. Ramsey killed of- his brother. Ramsey kill Ramsey is a kinslayer, and Tywin Actually, hesitated to kinslay. Thank you. Nah, he didn't I, hesitate I to kinslay. Tywin has a bloated. Sorry, Tim. I'll let you go in a second. Tywin has an image of House Lannister that he maintains. That is the only reason why he ever gives Tyrion anything is because of the House Lannister. That is why. He conceived of trying to kill him at the Battle of the Red Fork so that everyone would think of Tyrion as an honorable death in battle, but he was clearly trying to kill him. So there is no hesitation to kinslay except for the effect on Tywin's own ego and reputation. And I told Tim he would go next. So Tim, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was saying, I don't think Ramsay killed Domeric because Dom, the, the, I mean, I know Roos thinks he did, but the, the way Domeric died by poison. I don't think unless Ramsey could like be there to watch it happen. I don't think that would have been his way. I actually like the theories that Domric was killed either by the original Reek out of jealousy or by Ramsey's mother, so that Ru- so that Ramsey would be all that Roos had. Fifty-one to forty-nine. My it's God, close. it's close. It's <laughs> close. We're like tug of war over here, trying don't to turn. Play with me. Y'all really think Tywin's worse than... Okay, who would you rather be in a room with? Ramsey or Tywin? Neither one, man. Tywin's going to offer you wine. Tywin is going to offer you wine, duck, cheese, and bread. What's Ramsey going to offer you? Sausage. No. (laughs) I don't want that sausage. I don't want that sausage. That's fresh sausage. The rain thing was warranted. Chat, avenge me, chat. No, the rain chat, thing was not warranted. No, no, he killed lots of innocent women and children. That no matter what the political dispute was between the high lords of the houses, the innocent people did not deserve to die. It was not warranted. Please retract your comment. Fifty fifty. So you're saying Ramsey. You're saying Ramsey never killed innocents. Okay, cool. Ramsey never. Uh, killed. I did not. Tywin is the only one nope. to kill innocents. None Ramsey doesn't kill innocents. Taisha. Taisha. I'm just saying, no, no, yeah. Tywin's worse than Ramsey, guys. Chat, avenge me. Chat, avenge me. It's locked. We've got 416 votes. We've got 870 people watching. This is just like a real election. It's just the same. Half the people don't vote. And the people that vote are like, if we could just get the the uh, the, the ones that don't vote to vote for us, then we could win. <laughs> Come on, chat. 422. We, somebody's got to pick a winner. We got some super chats here. The chat is going so fast. Look at how fast. Tywin went against his own son, possibly both. Ramsey knows he's a monster. Tywin deludes himself into thinking he's not a sadist, but he secretly enjoys it. It seeks out an excuse for the harshest route possible. <laughs> I'm going with Tywin. I'm going with Tywin because I am applying scale and reach. So Ramsey's, 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 Ramsey's like a- pulled ahead. Oh, I just need 12 good men. <laughs> 20 good men <laughs> nettles you did that man you're, you're oh my god sir 20 of house goodman you bastard i regret can't uh cut nettles's mic it, but i regret having her on <laughs> oh no. man this is delightful this is just what i was hoping for you guys tywin is 
I I can't say who's worse. They're both horrific. I mean, yeah, because y'all forgot about Joanna. Joanna was a sneaky card. Y'all forgot. <laughs> that was dirty. That was underhanded. Yeah. <laughs> Ramsey likes oh, to yeah. hunt. You know, it's good activity. He likes. He teaches the. He treats the dogs well. That are named <laughs> after the women he killed. Starving them. Starving them for seven days. All right. I, I, well, this has moved in Ramsey's direction. It doesn't, I don't know that it's going to move back towards Tywin. I don't want it to be tied. We need a winner. So I think, I think we're going to call this for Ramsey. Ha ha. Jesus. <laughs> All Come right. On, guys. All right. I would upset. kiss Tywin's bald head. That's an upset to me, but I don't know how you pick, honestly, between these types. So I don't blame any of y'all. All right. Krasnas versus cool. Euron. I, again, feel strongly about this. I'm still not voting against Krasnas. And the only thing I will say is that Euron is... No, I can't say anything in favor of Euron. I was just going to say, like, he thinks he's fulfilling a magical <laughs> destiny, you know, with prophecy and the comet and stuff. But, like, he's a malevolent sadist and a psychopath. I can't say anything for him. So I don't even know how you pick between these two. I would vote for Krasnas. Just because when I think about the unsullied and the slavery and all that, it repulses me more. But um, Tim, go ahead and, and go first before Nettles tells everyone who to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because Euron is trying is trying to introduce slave trade into uh, into Westeros. I mean, that is one of his financial means is is making slaves. So he is enslaving Krasna people. Yeah. Yeah, while Krasnus is working with with systemic slavery, Euron is not opposed to that system and is actually very willing to work with it. And he is coming from a culture where that is outlawed. So that's another level of villainy for Euron is the fact that he's willing to embrace slavery, even though, even though he's coming from a place where it's been outlawed. So it's like Euron is... Krasnas is, is, is continuing an old system of evil. Euron is fully is fully in line with adopting a new system of evil just to advance his own efforts. So your vote is Euron? My is vote is Euron. Daniel Dipka because says Euron's, Euron's crew never has a bad word to say about him. You know, I mean, they would know. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> crew of mutes, by the way. Oh, I got a blue tongue. I uh, shade of the evening tongue. Wow. Wow. Gatorade. David, I want to say, David, I want to say thank you for being an emotionally intelligent man because <laughs> no society tells you that you don't have to think about other people. You don't have to think about other sexes because you're on the top of the hierarchy and whatever, I, I think it's magic, whatever it is about you, you choose to choose better. So I, I'm just being a little bit serious, even though we're having fun, but still, I, I just want to say that like, I see you for that. I appreciate that. I, I was just more, I give you props for going against what society is telling you. It you well, I really appreciate that because I was just talking to Maynard Plum last night and was just saying like how my politics in particular all come from empathy, from just me putting myself in other people's positions, feeling sorry for them and wanting justice and a fair opportunity for everybody. And I just think that's yeah. Um yeah. It's 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 a, it's basic good person stuff, but it is powerful. It's not uh, common. My point is it's not common. Mm, okay. And, well. and the reason it's not common is because society um, tells people who they are. Um, but I'm going to vote Euron. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think, so Euron, because what, the scale is grander so, or? Uh, um, like I, the scale doesn't matter to me. I'm looking at them as a human. And like I said, Krasnus is just a peg in the system of a wheel that's going to continue over there. Where like, kind of like what Tim was saying, Euron is trying to do something new. He's trying to defile mm -hmm. all the gods. And this is like true evil. Where there's like, if you, if Krasnus had been born in the family of Stark, would he be Krasnus? But I feel like if Euron was born in the Stark family, he would still be Euron. Yeah, I mean, if you sense. if you rise to the top as like the richest slaver, one has to assume you're like the best, most enthusiastic, you know, fastest turning over. Like, so yeah. that, I think that's what we have to assume he is that he represents the essence of what they're doing there. Um, but yeah, um, 
Those are good arguments on both sides. Go ahead, Maynard Plum. Go ahead and put the put put it to the people. We'll ask the jury. Who is worse? Krasnes or Euron? Who who gets the weirwood arrow? Guided by Blood Raven. <laughs> Don't I'm not I didn't mean to evoke Euron Blood Raven theories. That's not that's not <laughs> We're talking about People time talk about traveling Krakens. to stop Hitler here. That's the point. Who's who? Who are you time traveling to stop? Wow! Look at this. Yeah. I'm stunned. I even came Neither down. I. I even threw my. I, I apparently have no sway with the crowd. <laughs> That's I okay. The beginning you didn't listen to me. I watched you arm wrestle that we were locked in an arm wrestling match like this and you're like <laughs> I would have cried real tears if I lost that one <laughs> uh, it was impressive it was impressive showing you're very entertaining <laughs> so. and I'm right um, uh, well yeah. it's, you, you carried the day well, so I mean yeah you take that line I said about John Con traveling down the road of how can I be worse? You're on a sailing down that road at light sailing, speed. Sailing, sailing way, full speed because ahead. He's probably sacrificing people to get favorable winds. He is. I'd say winds powered by blood magic. You can hear the screams if you listen close. All right, so that is yeah. Euron's victory. Last call for votes. If you want to, it's a symbolic vote at this point. But if you want to, <laughs> yeah, slavery sucks. But you're on his worst. So, Ramsey and we're down to Ramsey and you're on. Is that where we are? I guess that's not a shock. These I, are. I the, thought it was going to be high winning you're on, but okay. I almost was. Joffrey, it was close. I thought Joffrey was going to make it to the last. Team, no, least, no. The adults have to be worse. Yeah. So you're on and Ramsey. There's just something so personal about Ramsey's torture and breaking down of Theon. And what's incredible about George's writing, as we always reflect on, is that he doesn't show much of it at all. He just dumps us in Theon's broken mind, calls it Reek, and lets us figure out that that's actually Theon. And the rollout of that is so effective at communicating the trauma that I think it makes such an indelible mark on all of our mind when we read the story. It's like, oh my God, this is Theon. I haven't seen him in three books. What's happened to him? Oh, he, I see. So he gets flayed to the point where he begs Ramsay to cut his finger off. And that is the little moral victory that Ramsay, the emotional victory that Ramsay is going. He has to get Theon to ask to get the finger cut off before he does it. Um, and he also did that to his genitalia. So there's, it's just so personal and horrific. Um, it's, it's horror writing. And it's, you know, Dave and Dan, when they had him, you know, you know, with a knife and holding his, pulling his pants down and like doing all this visual work, George did all of it with psychological after the fact flashback in Theon's mind. And it is somehow more horrific because our mind fills in or doesn't fill in, if you can make yourself just keep turning the pages, uh, what has happened in the meantime. So it is not surprising that Ramsey comes through that way for people. Um, and Euron, I'm honestly surprised that Euron has gone this far. Um, but he, maybe it's because I'm so, I'm a little bit deadened to the horror of his character because his symbolism is so crazy and he's the center mm -hmm. of so many magical theories. I usually am talking about Euron, you know, we're talking about Lovecraft and the, there's the Bloodstone Emperor's spirit going to body snatch him and all this stuff. But like, yeah, when you stop and think about the character, he it, it is as bad as they come. Yeah. And he's ambitious on top of that. So Nettles, what do you have to say about Ramsey and Euron? And then we'll go to Tim and then we'll, we'll go to the chat. We'll decide this thing. I don't know. Um, you just mentioned D and D, and it made me think of the show. And for me, it wasn't um, Ramsey taking the sausage. The thing that made Ramsey evil is when he pretended to befriend Theon, mm -hmm. and when they were in the field, and he was like, "That guy was about to take his butt," and 
Ramsey comes and saves him. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, think about that. Put yourself in the mind of Theon. Someone's the false going to escapes. Take yeah. Yeah. Someone's going to take. No, before the escape, it's the hero. Ramsey is the hero. Someone's going to take your butt and he comes and saves you. He kills those men. It's not that he maims them or wounds them. He kills them. So when Theon looks at Ramsey, he sees an absolute savior, not someone who disarmed, someone who killed the people that were going to take your butt. Then we get to the false escapement where it's like, okay, blah, blah, blah. So what he did was he showed Theon that you cannot trust anyone. Like when we, like I said, I don't care about scale. I'm talking about the soul. When we're talking about pure evil, a person that wakes up and says, I'm going to make your day bad. That's Ramsey. Like, well, it's Theon's Euron too. Sister. He does the same thing yes. to Aaron as well. So it's very comparable, but, actually. Does Aaron it's... have his sausage? Does Aaron have a sausage? Well, he before does. you go to just trying to like he, find. Right? A little reason to draw a distinction like let's just stop with your basic point which is the psychological torture like the malevolent yes. breaking down of someone's personality that is exactly what Euron is doing to Aaron as well and he relishes it as well he's almost like too busy to spend as much time on him as Ramsey is with Theon because he has grander ambitions but th these are the same type of person aren't they Tim it's close yeah no because I think there's the way Euron comes off. I don't think there's anything that Ramsey has done that Euron hasn't already done years ago. I think if you were to seat these two characters down and Ramsey were to start bragging about the sick shit that he's done, Euron would be the type to look at him and say, yeah, been there, done that. Call me when you have a real story. Like the, the false escape that Nettles is bringing up in the show, but then Euron does that on an even grander scale when he awards the Shield Islands to his enemies, knowing full well that they can't hold it. He is setting them up for such a major... Like, Ramsey set Theon up for a major fall with the false save, but Euron sets them up for so much of an even worse fall, and he does it through the guise of giving them the greatest gifts that they could ever have. He takes Victarion's best friend, Newt the Barber, raises him up to a lord, knowing full well as soon as the Ironborn leaves, they're never going to be able to hold it. He has systematically taken out all of his enemies, and he made them, and he did it by making them think he did them a favor. That is evil. It is, and Ramsey, also people are pointing you know, out that, of course, um, you know, as far as the children factor, uh, uh, Euron did uh, victimize his brothers while they were children. Um, I don't know that Ramsey has victimized any children. He probably would, but um, I don't know that he gets down the question of how old were those women that he hunted down, tortured, raped, mutilated, and then named his dogs after. So, My thing is there's fear, and then there's like intent, and then there's doing it. Show me, who you're, show me the sausages that Euron took. Okay, me as a woman, I spent half of my life being a tomboy. I was like Cersei. I, I was so mad because I didn't have a sausage. I wanted a sausage. I needed the sausage. But that also put me in this in in this put me in the mind of a man that if you took my sausage, that would be the worst thing. So that's these two are so close. I have to think of who threatens to do something and who does it. And I feel like Ramsey does it. Yes, Euron took the knife and said, I'm going to make you a sister. But he did not make Aaron a sister. Right, but he did our word as brothers. So that's comparable to me. It's um, bad. It's These two are, I must say, listen, Dave, I'm with you. This is so close. So I have to go. I don't, of, yeah, I'm not advocating for either I choice, to, to be honest. Something. <laughs> and I, the only thing I can go off of is that Ramsey actually did it and Euron threatened it. Well, that's you're 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 sort of zeroing in on the one one crime when there's a lot of crimes, but that's yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, like, I get it. Okay. Can we can we show the point where Euron lopped off somebody's member and gave it to him? No, but we can show the point that Euron lopped that Euron had Pyat Pre chopped into many pieces and fed to the other warlocks. We can show the body of Sawain Botley drowned in a cask of seawater. We can show a road littered with piles of corpses that Euron willingly admits to 
and he does it in his king's boot speech. <laughs> it's how Tim, he wins. Tim, yeah. Tim well, I'm, would you? There it about, is. I can stab you through the heart, or I can chop off your sauce. I, I don't know. You got y'all said Euron. Okay, I'm re looking at the chat. All right, chat is the old gods. So it looks like it looks like Euron is is a clear winner. A clear winner. Definitely scale. scale. As he should be. <laughs> well, he is setting up to be the villain of the story, and I think it looks like the fandom has picked that up. Because he, evil on all three scales, small, institutional, and metaphysical. Yep. It's well said. Yeah. Well said. The fully of flowers he, thing is... He is the storm. Just the awful. Yeah, I do. We let's um. So yeah, we'll run a we'll run a, a fun poll or two here. Uh, we'll we'll give just a minute for everyone to get their final vote in here. But uh, yeah, we'll let's vote for third place. I guess. Do run. Um, Joanne, out. Joanne Zelina said, "Great stream." I just want to say, it's just two words: great stream. Like this has been so mind boggling, and like just really <laughs> thinking about life and death and themes of the show, like just in the books and just, this has been a great stream. I just want to say that. <laughs> yeah, let's, okay, so yeah, let's do Sansa versus Ramsey because Sansa's pretty terrible, yeah, no. No, the, yeah. okay, so let me call Who's this poll. That? This is this is a championship win for Euron. Everyone celebrate. Well, Euron is the worst person in the world. Uh, from Ib to Ashai, as he says, he literally is the worst person in the world. Um, so let's do the third place vote. It'll be Tywin versus um well no we already did tywin versus ramsey yeah so i guess what well, third place would be what ramsey versus krasnick tywin and krasnick tywin and krasnick yeah. yeah do Kra do tywin and krasnick all right maynard plum he probably wants me to wrap the stream up but let's 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 no. do it Ty tywin versus krasnick let's see do a March Madness for the heroes of the story. Yeah, I mean, there's a few different ideas I have. I, the format is clearly a good one, so I will think of I will think of clever ways to to do more like this. Well, it's just the it's just the mind tingling part of it, like having to like this isn't like the normal a song of ice and fire stuff, you know. It really is a fun exercise to to, to think about this, even though it is so horrific. Yeah. So. so the consensus is Euron is the greatest villain in all of A Song of Ice and Fire. Is the most evil character in the whole. And well, you Ramsey's forgot. The um, who, who was the one who took the Amethyst Emperor? Who, uh, who was the I that wasn't. The, yeah, the Bloodstone yeah, Empire. Yeah. I wasn't going back that far. Okay, so here's our poll: Tywin and Krasnus. Just uh, these were these were two, my two favorites to win the tourney. To be honest, these were the two that I thought maybe could win, either Tywin or Krasnus. And they both got to the final four and Damn. suffered defeat. So I, I voted Krasnus. Yeah, I'll vote Krasnus. Tywin wants to give tax breaks to the wealthy, but he doesn't want to introduce slavery. Yeah, I'd probably vote... I think I would vote Krasnus. Because, like, you can sort of squint and be like, Tywin is just a really ruthless and good player of the Game of Thrones for a while until they lost. I, I don't take that view. I usually come at that view pretty hard. But there's just no context for what Krasnus is doing other than just straight human suffering. The scale um, the is titanic. Sorry, go ahead. I think if... No, I'm saying this story is about Westeros. If Krasnus was in Westeros, I think he would have been voted higher. But it's because we don't give a fuck about Essos. I'm yeah, but he honest. leered at Danny, and we like Danny. So. <laughs> Danny, but not anyone with a weird, hard to pronounce name. Well, that's I'm cool. So Ra Ramsey and Tywin, if you remember, was the close. That was 51 to 49. And here we see the Tywin Krasnus is also equally close. Yeah. So it looks like Krasnus, Tywin, wow. and Ramsey are all kind of on the same tier here and somehow Euron with the just sort of the ambition and the magical scope of his evil it just outpaces them all yeah but yeah this is very close good job george george wrote some complex villains like he definitely come on 
we can agree he vo- he focused on the villains, gave them complexity, gave them everything. He is an incredible horror writer, and I think that's what comes across here. And it's just like this. That's why he says about like, oh, we don't need dark lords and orcs. You know, he's like, there's plenty of darkness in the human, and you see, like, this is what he's talking about. Like, yeah, there's monsters mm-hmm. in every plot line. Every character yeah. that we're in their POV, there are some of these monsters that they have to confront and deal with. Um, yeah. And that nice. is uh, that is how he writes it. So this looks like a Tywin victory over Krasnus, but again, very close. So that just sort of gives us an idea that, yeah, Ram- that uh, Ramsey, Tywin, and Krasnus were all regarded about the same, with Euron just being one step worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though no one on his ship will say a bad word about him. Man, I, I, you know, most star reviews. Everyone who heard the dragon bo- dragon horn thinks he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, this was a very fun stream. Thank you very much, Tim and Nettles, for coming on. Uh, it was a big success. And it was, now we're all going to take a shower and watch Teletubbies <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> the, the X-Men 97. There you go. That's maybe a good palate cleanse. There's cartoons and... You know, Dark Phoenix, not really as scary as Ramsey Bolton, so. <laughs> All right. That was a fun stream, guys. And again, please look out for my, um, the Teletubbies are evil. I know that was a weird re- grab. I'm not sure. They're, they're, they're kind of dystopian. Um, but in any case, uh, uh, yeah, Danny Iceberg on Tuesday morning. Please click on it as soon as you see it in your feed. I have new art, it's moving faster, it's good stuff. It's been a while since you watched it, too, so I forgot some of the theories I put in there. And then yeah. uh, on Wednesday, with guests to be announced, possibly Girl Nettles, possibly someone else, we'll do episode six of House of the Dragon. So there you go. Love you all. Uh, these are some bad people in this story, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but... Channel mention. So I mentioned your channels. Uh, the Girl Nettles, and I mean, you guys are both have the, your names or your channels. Yeah, you know, just click so. my channel. You'll see some shit. Follow me on Twitter. You'll see some shit or not. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Expect one from me soon. Uh, a Song of Blood and Citrus. The script is written. Plan on recording that soon. Uh, that'll be Doran, Doran Martell's I... Blood Oranges and the influence of The Godfather film series on A Song of Ice and Fire. And then also Lemon Gate. Oh, yeah. Uh, Danny, Danny's lying lemons. I have to, I have to turn that into two videos. So we'll start. We'll do the oranges first, and then we'll do the lemons in a second video. Tim's gonna sort it out for us. <clears throat> oh, Doran Martell was probably was under discussion for dishonorable mention. I kind of sided with like he's a normal, just long plot, slow plotting high lord, but he's a little more devious than that. So could have, I could have seen him on on honorable mention. But there you go. Um, way walk walkers. Would have lost first round. He would have mm. lost first round. Yeah, cannon fodder. Like I said, yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, and oh, just in case you didn't know, I do think that Euron is the third head of the dragon. He is the other version of Azor High Reborn besides John and Danny. And if you want to hear why I think that, then check out the Euron King of the Apocalypse video and Knights King Euron video. Uh, yeah. Boo, Tyrion. Tyrion is the third head of the dragon. Boo. I think Tyrion <laughs> might get a quick dragon ride, and I do think he's Ares' son, but I don't think he's the third prophesied Azor High person. But I know. Anyway, just, let you, <laughs> just want to throw it out. I've got Euron videos if you like Euron, which apparently you do. So there you go, guys. Take care, and we'll see you very soon with more content.